Yo, episode 36, come take a ride through the jungle with Ivan from the Jungle Boys. We get into many stories, including Burner and the Exotics line and other pioneer cultivator things you would never believe. Make sure you tune in every Monday morning, 9 a.m. EST. It's first smoke of the day. Give it a like, subscribe, comment below, and make sure you turn on post notifications. Now sit back, relax, roll one up. Let's hear what Ivan has to say. Yo, what's up, man? We're back. Episode 36, first smoke of the day. This is one of the biggest episodes of date right here. I'm your host, Back Odds. I'm here with my co-host, Black Leaf. What up, what up? And we got a big, big, big dog in the building right here, man. Pioneer in the game. Leg young legend in the making. No intro needed. Ivan from the Jungle Boys, brother. How are you? Thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate, oh, dude, appreciate you. Homie, Super stoked. Oh, man. Years and years of uh, honestly seeing you guys scale and rosin presses and carnivals and back to prop 215 days. Like anyone who knows cannabis and is it a connoisseur knows the Jungle Boys. I mean, it doesn't matter in the world, worldwide. Appreciate yeah. that, man. It's unbelievable. As a yeah. grower, admiring the scale and being like to have 40, 50 lights, it's insane what you guys are doing. Like, and then 100 and two, you know, thousands. Yeah. Appreciate so. that, man. How do you feel? Uh, just cut, I'm an LA native, so you grew up in LA. Yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah. Um, California, California grown, and just you guys being California farmers. I mean, when you think about California cannabis, you you definitely know Jungle Boys hundred percent, and you know that you guys are delivering a quality product at a big scale that a lot of people haven't been able to mimic or be able to do. How do you feel? Uh, you know, with everything that's happening in the game, just from the beginning of things, looking back, kind of, you know, how far you came and all the how it, you know, we were kind of talking about it earlier, how it looks sweet from the outside. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, 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 you know, could be different from the man himself, your version. Yeah. I mean, man, uh, people ask me all the time, you know, like, like, how you doing, bro? What's going on? Like, what do you think about the shit? I'm like, bro, I'm fucking tired, bro. <laughs> that's you awesome. know like i'm, I'm fucking beat bro you know like we've been through the fucking ringer on this shit you know and it's just been a fucking fight after fight after fight after fight after lawsuit after this after that but you know like we're born and raised in la you know like i i grew up i think i moved like 24 or 26 times when i was a kid wow you know so I, when i tell people you that they're like how many times i'm like yeah bro like like i always thought that people just moved every six months or every year i thought that was like normal you know so growing up, you know, I was always around different people and, you know, I always, I always learned to adapt, you know, but I didn't grow up with money or anything like that. So I learned, you know, you're, you, you always be honest with people. You always respect people and you always, you always have your word. That's basically what you got. You know, you don't burn bridges, you know? So anytime I would do anything, I'd always do it 100. You know, I never fucked around, never burned no one, never jacked no one. You know, I was always like, Hey, I'm going to take care of the people around me. I'm going to do good, you know, and if they're on the same shit as me, let's fucking do it, you know? So I think, you know, being around weed when you're younger, you never think you're going to fucking grow weed for a living. You know what no. I mean? You'll I know what the fuck I was going to do when I, you know, I, I, I was fucking doing dumb shit when I was young, you know, but I never really like, there, there was the graph kids, there was the gangster kids, you know, like I, I hung out with everybody. You know, like I was cool with everyone, you know, like still to this day, you know what I mean? I'm like, I'm, I'm just cool with everyone. You know, I never had a problem with people, you know? So I think, you know, being around weed and, you know, like my mom grew weed when we were younger and shit, but it was never like grew it for any other reason that just, she just liked how the plant looked and smelled, you know? 
Wow. So it was a trip. Didn't you know? smoke it at all. I mean, my parents smoked weed, you know, but yeah. they weren't like heavy weed smokers every day. I remember they used to smoke cigarettes and drink beer, you know? Right, right. Because I'm almost, you know, I'm 45 years old, you know, yep. so I've been around, you know? You got OG. good genes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, man. You young dudes listening to that, man. It's the OG right here. <laughs> you know, I was born in 78, so... So I remember, you know, we were living in South Whittier and, you know, we had a big ass tree in our backyard. At the time, I didn't even know it was weed. You know, our neighbors used to say, hey, can you grab one of those those <laughs> things, those flowers for us and give it to us? So I didn't know. So I would go cut it off and no give it to way. them. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know. And, and looking back, my mom told me one time, like a long time ago, like, hey, you know, you were chopping our plant. That was our plant. We'd grow a plant every year. We have a big plant in the backyard. You know, we just like to yeah. look at it. You know, we'd smoke it, whatever, you know. Yeah. But it was never like pushed in our face where everyone like was smoking <coughs> weed and shit. But then you grow up and it's like, bro, I, think I was like 13, 14 years old the first time I smoked weed, you know? What was that and like? Sitting around a park in a circle. You know, my sister typical, always- had, Typical, typical yeah, park, you know, 13. My sister 13 was- 13 in park. Is exactly. Like <laughs> my sister was a couple years older than me. So I always hung out with all of her friends because I thought they were just cool. Lucked out. You know? <laughs> yeah. So all of her friends were, you know, just standing around smoking weed. And at the time it was like party clubs and shit. Like there was like party crews and shit. Right. Like Clicks. back in the, yeah, and like people used shit. to throw parties and they would charge at the door. Yeah. Like looking back, like you couldn't do that shit now. You no. know, someone gets shot, stabbed, some crazy mm-hmm. shit would happen. You know yeah. what I mean? It's just wild in LA. It is. It's just everywhere. You know? Yeah. And before, you wow. know, shit used to pop off. Shit used to happen, you know, but there would be big party crews and, you know, you'd pay 20, 30 bucks to get in the door and then whoever was in the crew would split all the money. You know, that's how people, that was like a hustle. You know, and then those guys later on went to be like club promoters and shit like that. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Got it. The beginnings. Exactly. So we're standing around a park smoking weed and I think it's, it's for the first time, you know, I smoked. And I'm like, I don't really feel anything, you know, like it was whatever, you know. And then the next day I'm like, same shit, you know, back at the park, you know, everyone's smoking. And then I got high for the first time and I remember being super high, you know, coming home and they're like, why are your eyes so fucking red? You know, just having a big ass smile on my face like I'm cool, you know, yeah. <laughs> went straight to my room, you know. Yeah. And then after that, I was just like always grabbing High Times magazines and reading them. Like I remember I'd sit in front of the liquor store before because I knew that like on Tuesday, the third week of the month, the new High Times was going to drop. And you'd get it faster at the liquor store than ordering it to your house. And I wanted to read every new episode of High Times. Damn. So I'd sit out there in the parking lot and I'd just be reading High Times, like soaking it all up. And I remember the first time reading about 12, 12, 12 on, 12 off. You know, like, this is how you flower a fucking plant. So I'd pop some seeds, flower it out. And I remember every night I'd put it in my garage, close the door, make sure it's dark inside the garage. And then every day, bring it back outside in the sun. Because I needed to flower out 12, 12, you know. Plant got super tall in the backyard, came home one day and it was cut in half. And I'm like, fuck, cut my plant in half. And I was like, this is how you top it. This is how you top a plant. And I'm like, what do you mean you top a plant? Like, you just chopped my fucking plant in half. You know, wow. like the plant used to be this big yeah. and now it's only this big. She's like, no, you never let it go over the fence. You want to always train it to be, be below the fence. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Oh, oh, oh. wow. You know, so how so, old were you at this age? I was like 14. Wow. You know? So a year later, yeah, from the first time smoking, yeah, always you supportive. You, 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 you threw some seeds in and yeah, grew a big plant. Yeah, you know, and it was it was just one plant. You yeah. know, it wasn't anything. Maybe one or two. You yeah. know, nothing crazy. You know, that's dope. So what happened after she topped it? We. So the, the pant ended up flowering, ended up being a female, right? It was like some fucking stress weed, you know what I mean? Yeah. It was, it was, well, I remember we fucking- Were you proud to like smoke a, it? Uh, oh yeah, we fucking smoked that shit. <laughs> you were proud, you're proud of every, like- Yeah, you ended up yeah. with like a half a pound, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, damn. Like a half a pound of weed, you know, like this is fucking crazy. This shit lasted a while, you know? Your homies were stoked, everyone was stoked. I, I don't even remember what we did with that shit, bro. You yeah. know, like it was yeah. so long ago, you know? And then I really started getting into weed. Like I was like obsessed with, I remember I had fucking pictures all up in my room, you know, but then I started fucking up and doing bad, you know, getting in trouble, you know, just doing dumb shit. You're a kid, you know, trying to figure out life, you know? And I had a bunch of weed plants in, in a, in a, like a little, uh, like Winnebago. My parents had like a broke down Winnebago and it, the plants were looking pretty fucking good, you know, like <laughs> looking back at it, I'm like, dude, I was doing all right back then, you know? And I was doing bad and I came home one day and I think it like kicked out of school or something. And my mom chopped all my plants down, you know? And she's like, you're going to Arizona. You fucked up, you know, like <laughs> you're, you're going to go live with your damn. aunt, you know? And I'm like, damn, I thought, you know, I was doing bad. I was doing damn. dumb shit. You what know? was your aunt like? 
she was like scary lady. My aunt was crazy. Yeah. yeah. You know? It was a you big like, threat. I'm going to be fucked if I go over there. My aunt was mad cool. Let me do whatever the fuck I want. Oh, oh so wow. you got sent out there. Yeah, but you know, at the time, I think my mom was just trying to think like, hey, California, LA, shit's wild. Let me send them to Arizona. It's going to be a little bit, you know, it is wherever you go, you find trouble. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, so I, I so she cut all your plants down and sent you to AZ, down, threw them in the fucking trash, sent me to AZ. I'm gone, you know. Holy and shit. I think I'm like at this time, probably like 15 or something, you know. The but beginnings, I, yeah, you know, the beginning. But looking back then, you know, you don't think you're gonna do this shit for a career, none of that, shit, yeah, it know? didn't matter as much, no, nothing yeah. at all. Yeah, I now, just, nowadays it'd be like, yeah, devastating. I was just fascinated with the plant, you know, yeah. like the growing part of it. And not, you'd, you'd open up High Times magazine, and that shit was so fucking cool. Yeah. You know, like you see these fucking incubators the they have. And everything oh, yeah, all that shit, like, you know? Everything you, coming There was out. always like cool growing technology in there that was like, oh, this is cool shit. Like you could set up like this thing that looked like a refrigerator with lights in it. You go to a plant in there and you'd always be like, damn, this shit's cool. You know, it probably never grow fucking weed, but it looked really yeah. cool in the magazine. <laughs> it, looked, you know? it looked good on paper. Yeah, you know, someone, got, someone made a lot of money off that yeah, shit. For oh, sure. You know? Oh, you got gimmicked a few times. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Think about all the seed banks, bro, that were just fucking giving That's people a whole street of oh, trash. Oh. Like a, you might, you, who even knows what seeds those were? Yeah. yeah, for sure. You know, and you have to send a money order to a different country, you know, and then you're worried about putting your address on that shit. That was fucking crazy back then, you know? Like, Dude, shit was wild, crazy. you know? And then after all that shit, you know, kind of figuring out life and what I want to do. I had a kid when I was young, 17. I had my first daughter, Olivia. She's actually the manager of uh, TLC, which is cool. Um, no way. That is yeah. epic. I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah, That's a lot dope, of people, man. Shout out to Olivia. Yeah, <laughs> yeah big really. time. Yeah. You got so, a legend of a father. Family. So, so going back, like, I was just trying to survive, you know? Yeah. I was trying to figure out, hey, what the fuck am I going to do in life? I got um, my chicks What was it pregnant. like in AZ? AZ was like same shit, right? There was like weed, but it was just stress, low key. Right? Yeah, a lot of stress, you know. But listen, w- when we were fifteen, AZ was like considered mids. Like if you had oh, Arizona, yeah. it was like mids. Yeah, they didn't have no chronic, you know. Yeah, but when but I it was, wasn't it wasn't stress though. No, there was stress, but it was con- they, it, it, they it was a notch up from stress. You know what I mean? We we would consider it stress now, but yeah, you know, yeah, it was yeah. a little better than stress. You know, back then, yeah. But even when, even back then when we were 15, we used to get like some dank ass fucking chronic, like fire ass weed, like a real purple frosty nug and a lime green nug, you know? And it, there used to be some, we used to go in a guy's car and he'd be like, Hey, we're going to OC. Supposedly the guy was like a teacher that grew weed, but we, he'd, we'd always have to stay around the corner and he'd go to his house because we couldn't know where the guy lived. And we'd all pitch in on, you know, an ounce or whatever. We'd come back with, you know, like a fire frosty. It, it might have been, you know, Beechers or something. You know what I mean? It could have been from yeah, Canada yeah, or something. Yeah. But it was like frosty. It was fresh, smell yeah, good, you know? Compared to stress, we're like, dude, this shit's fire, you know? And then there was some like really frosty lime green stuff that started coming in where you're like, dude, this shit almost looks like OG now, but maybe just not grown right. Interesting. You know? Okay. And, and I remember I had a seed of it and I popped it. And it like auto flowered on me, but the auto flower was like the dankest weed ever, you know? And then I'm like, all right, like this is different now. Like this is a different level. I remember I used to show people, one of my buddies, Miguel, who's, who uh, I, st- I still keep in contact with and stuff. He, we always talk about it. Like, dude, remember that weed we used to get? Like, like people wouldn't even believe us now, you know? Yeah. But long lost. Yeah. You know? And, yeah. And who knows what that shit was? You know, who knows yeah. what the story behind it was, you know? Yeah. But. It, it's just it was different back then you know so fast forwarding it like just went you know had my kid you know was young just trying to figure out life i was like i gotta get a fucking job tried a bunch of, did everything bro you know worked at little caesar's pizza for a day got fired <laughs> one day <laughs> yeah it took me too long to deliver a pizza bro because you have to read a thomas guide you didn't have a fucking cell phone to where where the fuck are you gonna go? You didn't even have a math quest yet. No, none of that no, shit, bro. You, you, had to go, you had to go to a book and read a map, bro. <laughs> People don't even know these days what that's you know? like. Like yeah. I was eighteen years old, seventeen years old, looking at a map, like or the I don't know which way is up, down, north, south, east, west. You know, like I don't. And I remember I had to go deliver a pizza to like an apartment complex. And it took me like two hours and I got back and they were like tripping on me. I'm like, oh, fuck. You told us you know how to read a map. I'm like, fuck, I'm just trying to get a job, you know? Yeah. So I don't remember if I fired or I quit or whatever. And I'm like, dude, I got to figure some shit out, you know? 
That is rough. Yeah. Reading a map to deliver pizzas too. Like, <laughs> I don't think a lot of people even know what that would like. That is intense. Pizza. Yeah. I mean, the older generation for sure knows it. You know, yeah. if you're in your 40s or 50s and, or older, you know, like you, you understand all that shit. But the younger generation now, we don't have fucking cell phones, you know, like, I don't even think like maybe you had a pager then, you know, maybe. <sighs> Yeah, you know, I remember I had the first Nextel cell phone and it was like a walkie talkie. Two ways. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's bring what, those that, back. That's what we used that's for work. That's what I came up on. Yeah. That's what we used for back. work because yeah. we got so tired of putting quarters and having a call and everyone would say, I never got your page. I, you, I couldn't get a hold of you. You know? Yeah. Yeah, shit was different back then. You that know? was the official that. trap phone. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everybody I had on the two way on the church. For sure. Those so do you fun. remember what the first strains were back then when you first started hearing about strains that you were smoking? Like when you're talking those early days, was yeah, there I any mean, names? They, they never really had names. It was just like chronic. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was like this is fire, this is chronic. You know what I mean? No one ever said like OG Bubba and that that came later. You know what I mean? Like that that was much later, you know? So I kind of took a, a break from like the whole weed thing and like did dabbling in it and just kind of went to work. Like I had to get a regular job, you know, started, started, my dad was working at FedEx building a bunch of stuff. He was always like really handy with his hands and he could like weld and, you know, uh, build motors and he was always like doing cool shit, you know? So he was working at FedEx and he's like, Hey, you want to get a job over here? You know, like we work on these big conveyor belts and we do all this other crazy shit, you know? I'm like, hell yeah, I want a fucking job, you know? Yeah. Took that shit. So started working with him and learned a crazy amount of knowledge. Like just learn how to work on air conditioners and learn how to do drywall and learn how to replace light bulbs and ballast. And like, so when I was mad young, I knew how to work on shit. I knew how to fix shit, you know? So I just kind of took that skill with me and I started like, you know, doing construction on the side and building buildings and doing all this shit. But the whole entire time, whatever I did, I always studied it. You know what I mean? I always like to read about it. And like, I remember I was going to trade tech because I wanted to know everything about an air conditioner. You know, I want to know how that shit worked, how you could fix it. If it broke down, I didn't want to have to call some guy. I wanted to be able to fix it myself, you know? So then I, I started realizing like, Hey, listen, college isn't for me. You know, I never did good in school. I never liked to sit down. So I'm just going to kill it at this job. And at the time FedEx was like expanding, they were going crazy. It was like, people started shipping on the internet now, you know? And FedEx was like, dude, we're, we're gonna go through the biggest growth spurt over the next five years. Like they're putting, like this is before FedEx like barely started. Like they, they were so big, they were like shorting packages in their parking lot. They didn't Jeez. have enough room in their buildings. Interesting. So they're like, hey, this is what our plan is. We want you to be a part of it. Like, I was, you know, like we're gonna start expanding the business and, you know, like help us out, you know? So, at the time, while I was working there, I started growing weed, you know, um, like rewind a little bit. My dad, before, before I started working there, my dad got sick, so he stopped working and he went through a bunch of shit because he was a veteran, went to the veterans hospital, went through a bunch of bullshit. And uh, he ended up getting, he ended up getting cancer. They ended up like diagnosing him with cancer. I've told the story a few times. A few people know about it. It's, it's, it's kind of part of my life story. Um, so when he got cancer, and I was working at FedEx. Um, I kind of got back into growing weed because one of the doctors was like, hey, stage four cancer, chemo, blah, blah, blah. Oh, wow. You know, nothing much we can do. If you want to make them comfortable, try fucking weed, you know? And I'm like, went back to my old days where I'm like, shit, you know what I mean? Like, I know how to fucking grow weed. I know how to do some shit, you know? But at this time now, shit was way different, you know? Like, like medical had popped up, you know? And the LA medical scene was popping. You know, there was guys doing, you know, there was guys, uh, most people were going in their house. You know what I mean? There was a few guys that might've had warehouses, but at the time, if you had a warehouse with 20 lights, like you were doing crazy shit, you know? What's interesting is you already laid the groundwork for the great, a great grow career and you didn't even know it yet. I had no idea. Yeah. You know? So you're coming into it swinging with everything, but just the grow knowledge. Yeah. So I kind of, all the shit that I, that I learned at FedEx, I went and I built, I had, had leased a house, I was leasing a house and I had a three car garage and I took one of the garages and I did a grow. And I remember like going to the hydro store and everything was like, you couldn't talk about weed. You had to call it tomatoes, right? Cause they, they kick you out. If you, if you said the word weed, they tell you, you have, you have to leave the hydro store, you know, and everyone, no one would drive their car to the hydro store, you know, you'd borrow someone else's car, you borrow your mom's car somewhere you didn't leave and you go to the hydro store, you know? So at the time, 
I'm doing this crazy expansion with FedEx. I'm like learning all this crazy shit. And then I'm deciding I'm going to start growing weed on the side, you know? <laughs> and there was times where I was working so many hours at FedEx. I just sleep in my truck in the parking lot, you know, instead of going home, I have to be back in four hours. Like, fuck this. I'm just going to sleep in the parking lot. Wow. Put you in know? work. Hustling, yeah. You know, because I'm like, bro, I'm not going back to being broke. You know what I mean? Fuck being broke. Like I grew up fucking, you know, when you move 24 times and you're a kid, and you're sleeping on people's living room floors and shit like that shit sucks. It probably you makes know? an imprint on you for the rest of your life to be it, dead honest with you. It gives you a different desire for survival. For sure. You know, as an adult, at yeah. least. Right. So, man, this is keep it going, bro. You're fucking this is amazing. Yeah. So. We got a movie on our hands. <laughs> <laughs> for real. So all that shit happens, you know, and, and, and I'm working and I'm hustling and I'm like, fuck this, bro. Like money's nice. It's nice fucking getting a paycheck. You know what I mean? You, you, you bring home 800 bucks a week. You're like, this is fucking great. Security. It's oh, yeah, comfortable. Bro. It's you comforting. Know? Yeah. You know, it's it, like your fallback of all oh, man of shit hit, especially in these times. Yeah. Right. Because it was way less right now. It's a different story. But these times is like yeah, different for sure you know 20 years ago if you can make 800 bucks a week like you're fucking doing good no you day. know but All i didn't boats. start out making 800 bucks and a week I started, yeah i, I started yeah. making a couple hundred bucks a week and i just kind of worked my way up you know so yeah so my dad got sick started going weed and had a couple really good runs you know what i mean like grew some fire you know and i went to the hydro store and i told the dude on the low like hey bro help me out here like you know like what what happened he's like oh listen this is what happens you know you have your medical card you have your 99 plant thing you're good you have nothing to worry about you just go down to these dispensaries and the guy will buy all your weed off of you you know you're, you're a medical patient you're growing it for yourself you're going it for your dad you just go and show your medical card i'm like cool you know so i go down there and i'm like tripping out you know like dude there's like there's store you know like there's there, there wasn't like it is now you know mm -hmm. what i mean like the guy might have had like four jars like i remember that the original tlc frank chef tells the guy who like started tlc and he had a hospice bed and he would he would give canned goods and then you'd go sell him your weed you know like this was real medical shit back then you know like he believed in what he's doing you, you show up to his house and you're in his living room like you, you're waiting for a patient intake you're doing it in his living room you know, and this was in the valley. This was his life. Yeah, this is, he, yeah. He loved what he did. You know what I mean? He was doing it for AIDS patients, cancer patients. You know, it was different, you know? So I go bring him this this flower. He's like, oh, I'll take all your flour from you. I'll buy it all from you. You know, I, I, we don't have enough flour here, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, here's my expenses. Here's what it cost me. You know, three, four grand, five grand a pound, whatever it was back then, you know? What strain was it? I, I remember I grew like three or four different strains smart you know one was like a chem deep chunk and then there was like some other stuff inside there you know it was like i just grew and, and i remember him saying like these two are better like like these two as much of this as you can grow i'll buy and where did you get those first clones from or seeds I, it was it was just like medical stuff you know where you went down to la and you said hey i'm a patient they would give you some clones you know what i mean stuff like that you know it was awesome all, you know and, and oh, clones yeah. maybe had some mites on them or some mold or something but you just figured it out Yep. you know it was that good, or nothing yeah, you, yeah. You, what else you can do buy some seeds off some shady seed bank you know like we've done that before <laughs> or a bag know? seed yeah or a bag seed yeah you know? that's how it was you know and then i just remember being like all right fucking you know this is crazy so you know the first thing i did with that money i bought more lights you know so so anytime i had a harvest i would just go buy more lights more equipment Right, because I'm like I'm cool. I got a job on the side. You, well, you know, just loading your house down, loading stage my house by down. stage. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, staging my house up. Right now, I now I moved over to the other garage. Got so it, it started got with it. like a little half a half build out of the garage. So it was like a you one car garage. garage, and he did one car. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. So then I'm like, I'm gonna hit the two car garage now. Right? All right, all right. I first started with four lights and the one car, and then I put like another two lights, so it made it six, and then another two, it made it eight lights. You know, figured out, okay, I need a little bit more AC, all that shit, you know? Like, <laughs> okay, I got this shit, you know? Um, emptying out my dehumidifier every day, you know, because the dehumidifier wasn't plumb, so you have to pour in a five gallon bucket and then either use the dehumidifier to water the plants again, because when your dehumidifier is full, you know, your plants have perspired, you know? Ooh. So you're just kind of recycling that water. And I'm big, like, okay, I figured this out. Right there. <laughs> that yeah. and like you inferred that just from logic. You're, yeah. I mean, just that a lot of people wouldn't. I mean, you're on it, bro. You're yeah. on, you got a green thumb. So 
at that time too, I started jumping online, you know, fucking around online and like checking shit out and what was out there. And people used to use these toward softwares and shit where people couldn't track where you were, where you were at and shit. So like, yeah. it was like, okay, I'm going to start going online and like checking out what, what there is out there, you know? And you know, people popped up like old school, OG rascal was on there. You know what I mean? Uh, capulator was on there, you know, you're like, what the fuck are these names people are using? You know? <laughs> so like, okay, cool. Signed up. What, was your, really, what was your name? Jack may offer. Yeah. Cause I used to listen to Howard Stern. <laughs> <laughs> great, great Howard. Yeah. You know what's funny? This guy's the biggest Howard Stern. It's some grower yeah, shit, bro. bro. It's listen to Howard Stern yeah. since I was a little kid, bro. Dude, yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. all, anything Howard Stern's he's on, a he's a legend, subscriber. Yeah. <laughs> he was at I hop in a truck. Right. I'm like, oh man, it's Howard Stern again. But yeah. That's what but I get a, sucked into it. And I don't yeah. even listen like that, but yeah. Oh, that's really hilarious. But that's a lot for you. I mean, honestly, bro, you're taking this on by yourself other than looking at IC Mag or or an online sure. no guidance from any older homies to be like hold on you got to put that light like this because this is nah, yeah. wow none of that bro that's you know? impressive yeah. yeah and what age are you at this time uh i mean i'm in my my late 20s okay late you know? 20s now yeah, yeah. okay you and know? so you got serious with fedex Some yeah time so that was by. my life bro that was yeah my that life. was your you grind know? yeah i was building fedexes all up and down california fucking blowing shit up bro with your father my my dad had well, passed away yeah. okay yeah so my so, dad passed away and i kind of took over it all and the, i even a actually got offered an executive position at fedex a couple of guys were, were retiring and they're like hey we want to give you our position like it's fucking been an incredible run and at the time i was doing really good growing weed you know, and they're offering me like a hundred or 150 K a year. And I remember like fucking losing sleep over this shit, but I couldn't tell anyone I grew weed there. You know, I couldn't say, Hey bro, like, what do you think? Like, what should I do? You know? And these guys were retiring <laughs> with full retirement benefits, you know, like they were, they were doing you felt good. like an idiot. Yeah. You know, like, of no I didn't know what to do. Oh, yeah. what should I do? Yeah. yeah. Do I go grow weed or do I stay at FedEx where everything is going to be cushed the rest of my life? I'm going to be doing the same job every single day. But you feel, options, like, you, know? you feel like you would be making a bad move if you didn't. That's how the job yeah. mindset, like, that's how they get, you know. I can't, well, I can't Because they make it right? so secure. It's safe. Yeah. It's safe here, yes. which is like comfort. Well, and if one someone asked passion. me today what they should do, i say take the FedEx job. Really? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. You know, listen. Uh, don't say I, that. I, I'm, ta I'm talking about. Don't in kill today's, too many dreams. I'm talking about in today's fucking California cannabis world. We'll get to that. Okay. In, in okay. Bit, you know what I mean? Okay. All right. Uh, uh, he didn't back, mean that all the way, guys. Back, no, fuck no. <laughs> don't break hearts. I would have said, let's go. You don't want to be a FedEx right now. No, hell no. You know, yeah. but I'm just saying, times have fucking changed, bro. Yeah, it's, people you know? stock so options let's back get, then let's are get millionaires. Into, let's get into. <laughs> oh yeah, I know, I actually knew some guy, and we'd be like, "How did he make all that money? 30, 40 million? They're like, "Oh, he had stock options when FedEx yeah. went public. Yeah, he used to be a driver. No, I was with guys. Like, what? I worked with yeah. guys that worked at FedEx before FedEx was FedEx. It used to be called Flying Tigers. So, so imagine these guys, bro. They had been with FedEx 30, 40 years. So they were old school, you know. So yeah, those guys retire with stock options or whatever their benefit. They, these guys had houses on the beach and multiple oh, yeah. rental houses. Oh, like, so you that was a strong yeah. They were picture they, there of you to see like success in a sense of yeah. like I don't know it could work really work out. Yeah, and when I started there, mm -hmm. I started at the bottom. You know, I was just yeah. a maintenance mechanic. No, you know what I mean? Up. So it's like when these guys offered me that position, it was a big deal. You know what I mean? It was like fuck. It bro. was your shot to really climb. Yeah, you know, like, I'm, I'm gonna be someone. You know, I get to go work. Like I don't. I'm not even educated, bro. These guys got college degrees. You know, and they're wow. asking me to take over their position. You know, mm -hmm. what I mean, they don't hire anybody in those positions unless you got like a master's degree or something. Especially wow. back then, you you had to come with paperwork. You know, now you can you can get away with different things in the world. The world's a little bit op more open minded. You right. know, they're like, hey, yeah. if something's smart, someone's smart, and it's more about the person yes, than the piece right? of paper because a piece of paper you fake it. One hundred percent. Who cares? Yeah. I don't even look at the like. Not Hell you know, no. most people, yeah. employers don't look at the piece of paper. They're like, yeah, listen, let's if you're, talk. If you're hiring someone to do your taxes and the account, you want that person to be educated. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know you at least, yeah, your lawyer, you want them to have a good, you know, a good education. You, you want know? to know you can trust them and yeah, have, have a condo you know? with them. But some sure. of the best guys I know and some of the most smartest guys I know, they didn't go to college. You know what I mean? They were just most. smart, you know, because they had a different upbringing. They were never pushed to go to college or maybe they just couldn't sit in the class long enough to even pay attention. That's how I was. You know what I mean? I'm like, give me the fuck out of here. I need to go, you know? So what happened? The ultimate decision came. The ultimate decision came. 
And I remember, man, it was tough. It was like, I had to give them an answer. And I came and I told them, I'm quitting guys. And they're like, what the <laughs> fuck? Oh, How did wow. it go from you your taking this, this position? Life. Yeah, I was living. Is that double killing life. you too, though? The bro, identity crisis. It was like, tough as fuck, bro. A lot of us still be, still battle with that. To the, be honest with you, imagine right. You live this normal life where you have this thing, and then you grow cannabis. Super and, legit. Yeah, and cannabis is still. You can't go tell people you grow fucking weed, bro. All you're ever talking to about is people's FedEx. Yeah, you know. And on the side, it's like you know, I had all this other crazy shit going on. And I was growing a bunch Which of weed. Which is mainly you your know? life. And yeah, you like, love it. You love it. it it's compelling. It's it. something that you just can't pull yourself away from. And and he knew, like in yeah. his soul. Yeah, yeah. I was obsessed with the plant, bro. Mm -hmm. You know, like I always told, I, even back then, I'd be like, dude, if like weed was legal and everyone grew weed, I would still grow fucking a plant. It's like the prettiest thing in the world, bro. Like to watch this thing that's all sappy and sticky and smells incredible. You know, and changes different colors. It like is this is the prettiest plant in the world. Oh, it fans out. Oh, it's and, incredible. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So like, anytime like my getaway is, dude, I got to go in the grow room, bro. You know, put my phone on silent and go in the grow room and work on plants. Like that's my happy place. That's your you meditation, know? huh? Oh, right, dude, that that every problem in the world goes away. What music? You know, none. It it, it just depends. You know what I mean. Yeah. Sometimes you want to listen to music when you're a girl, and sometimes you just want to hear the fans and the mm -hmm. AC, yep. and just and, you know, it just the depends on the moving. mood you're in. You know. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, so so the house that I was in that I was growing in, I quit my job. The house that I was growing in, um, I had like a five year lease, and the guy sold the house. <laughs> So I quit my job. Of course. Right? I quit my job. I set up in the garage. Holy I'm like, put hell. everything in this. I'm good. Get a notice. You need to move out 30 days. We sold the house. I'm like, what do you mean? I have a five-year lease here. Oh, it doesn't matter. New owner. You got to get out. Like, fuck. Right? So I'm tripping. Like, damn, I quit my job. All right. Have a little bit of money saved from a harvest. You know, not much, but a little bit. What, what's the, what's, what do I do? Do I go get a house? Do I go get a warehouse or whatever? And I'm like, I'm just going to give me a small little spot. Worst case scenario, if I have to go back to work, this warehouse that I have, I'll go back to doing FedEx shit. You know, selling bearings, hustling, working on people's air conditioners. I'll figure it out, you know? So I got myself a little warehouse spot. And then the medical scene, like, really started picking up and popping. You know, now people started getting more, uh, um, what was called Prop D back then, you know? Prop D uh, permits. And it, the craziest part about LA is it, you didn't actually have a license. You had immunity from prosecution, right? <laughs> so, so everyone that had all these permits that, that had all these stores in LA, no one ever had a license in the city of LA. We put that together around 2016. Yeah. We were like, I don't think anyone actually has no, like. No one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm ICO. I'm pre ICO. Yeah. That was like the term, you know? Yeah, but see, and we started realizing like the things that they had on their wall was like variant and I don't know. Pre, please don't bust me. I don't know how they had those. <laughs> yeah. But. Yeah. So the, the thing that they had on their wall was a tax certificate. And what that tax certificate did, it showed that you paid your taxes to the city. Because at that time, I think the tax was like 10%, right? Tax was still high back then, which was crazy, you right, know? Right. But you'd pay that tax. And then it got to the point where they weren't handing out any new ones, right? So whoever the first couple hundred people that had them was, and you know, every one of them had an issue, right? One guy missed this tax bill. One guy moved his location, didn't tell the city he moved. Two of them had a partnership dispute where the partners were arguing over the business permit that they had, right? The landlord took a piece of it. There was always some crazy shit behind all of them. And there was all kinds of characters, you know what I mean? Characters that you'd meet, you know? You know, you knew which this guy is selling his. Oh, he's full of shit. He don't even own that shit. It's just a copy of it. <laughs> it's a you know? copy of a license. Yeah, that, yeah. that he burned from that's his partner. I, that's what I think a lot of we saw. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You, if you went to all the medical shops in LA, there yeah, was always if, some if you're crazy like, stuff. You know, selling your, your product or whatever, like, yep. you're going to see that shit. You're going to see all of it. Yeah. You're like, no, I think it's a fake shot. We used to call it like a fake shot. Oh, yeah. Well, it was all pawn shops back there. You get buzzed in the first door, then buzzed in the second door. Usually, yeah. people aren't used to that. They're like, and oh, yeah. you open the door and you go in, and then you oh, open yeah. the second door, and then you're in the the actual dispensary. Yeah, and you know, if they didn't ask you for your ID, you knew you were in the trap. You know, because yeah. <laughs> a normal medical spot would ask you for your ID and your medical card. Yeah, and if they're just like, come in, you're you knew you were in the trap. Like you're like, all right, we're in the trap right now. 
you know? So had you got a taste of that yet? Taking your flowers to dispensaries at that point? Yeah. So I had gave my flowers to dispensary from the first run, you mm-hmm. know, and then I kind of was every time I'd harvest, you know, and they would always be like, dude, this is fire. Like as much of this as you can grow, we'll take, you know? And I remember just seeing trash bags everywhere, you know what I mean? Money counters going, you know, because at that time, you know, it, LA was popping, you know? And what I was, year was this? Bro, this was like 15 years ago. Yeah. You know? Early 2000s. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Early 2000, 2003, you know? Wow. The yeah. heyday, huh? Shit sh- was going, you know? So what was your spot like? I, I mean, first spot? it's tiny, bro. Tiny. You know, no one knew about it, you know? So just you solo. That's solo, it. Solo. The solo. whole time. Yeah. And then at that time, I was going in the hydro store a lot. So I started being friends with the hydro store owner. And it was, it was a hydro store in Whittier, Green Coast. And I started being friends with the owner because he was, he, you know, he knew everyone, right? Because everyone went in there, you know? He's willing so, to be cool. Yeah. So as I started getting more weed, he would say, hey, go down to LA, you know? So I go down to LA. There's a few stores that you knew you fucked with. You know, there's a few people you knew you fucked with. It was cool. It was medical. They bought all your, it was all legit, you know? So go give them the flower. And then boom, that warehouse got shut down. You know, some shit happens. Edison wanted to come in and inspect it, you know, some crazy shit like that, you know? And it was like, fuck, you know, this is brutal, you know? So then at the time we had heard that Santa Fe Springs was going to start allowing people to open up dispensaries. We're like, dude, we got to get on the Santa Fe Springs shit. Um, I was, you know, born and raised in Whittier. Whittier was like a big part of my life. I, I moved all around Whittier, but I lived in Whittier, you know? So I'm like, Santa Fe Springs, that's like my backyard, you know? So I hit up the dude from the hydro shop. I'm like, hey, you want to open up a, sh- a shop in Santa Fe Springs? And he's like, hell yeah, I want to open up a shop in Santa Fe Springs. He's like, my name can't be on it. Like, I own a hydro store. It's too crazy. But I'm like, cool, bro, let's do it. You know, mm-hmm. rented, a, rented a place in Santa Fe Springs. And I'm like, let's vertically integrate this shit, bro. Let's do a grow. Let's do extracts. Let's do flour. Let's make it so everyone comes here and we got everything, bro. You know, and he's like, all right, like do your thing, bro. You know, like I'll, I'll go halfers with the money, halfers with the equipment, all that shit. So we ended up doing it and we did good. You know what I mean? We had some good, I remember we had a 20 lighter and then we did another 20 lighter and then we did another 20 lighter. So I think we had 20, like 80 lights there. You know, wow. at the time, 80 lights is popping, you know? No, seriously. And oh, then, yeah. And then we rented the popping. units next door to us. So we had like another 20 lighter, another 40 lighter, another 20, and I'm running this shit all by myself. No team? No team, bro. You know, I, I, had my homies, I had my homies that would trim for me. They so cut down, they the, would help cut down. The and same shit? dudes that work for me to this day, bro. Yeah. They would come help me cut down and they would help me trim, but you I was running like, I was running that shit, bro. Same guys you know? as today. Oh, yeah. Same guys, bro. Man, big same shout guys. out to you guys, man. Yo, Huge yeah. shout out. Yeah. That's what it's about, man. Yeah. That that do, that story doesn't get told often because it's hard to make it with your hometown homies. Or, or were they your hometown no, homies? Or they were your late adult no, life homies no, these and are, shit. These, these are homies that I know from younger because the older sister, this, that. I, grew, I knew everyone from, you know, what this, La Puente, you know, and I would call them up. Everyone knew that, hey, listen, I, I call you for work, bro. I got legit shit. I'm not going to fuck with your money. I'm going to pay you. Let's go work. Let's go make rep. this money, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. You know? So I would call people up, like, come trim from it. At that time, you know, you're making a couple hundred bucks a pound, 250 bucks a pound, 300 bucks a pound. You know, yeah. you're trimming two, three pounds in a day. You know, these fools are making dope. good money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, walking around yeah. with a rack out of their pocket every day. They leave, you know, and smoking and smoking, smoking, free food yeah, or whatever. Everybody do it. Yeah, everybody's buying happy. Food, everything, bro. You know, everybody's happy. Yeah, it was just different back then, you know? <laughs> and then crazy shit happened in the city of Santa Fe Springs, fucking. One of the mayors uh, that kept voting for us not to be able to open was taking bribes from other dispensaries and his phone was being tapped by the FBI. Yeah. So he, wow. it was a city council member um, in Santa Fe Springs. It's all, this is all like, you can look it up on YouTube. You know what I mean? There's like videos of it and everything. So he would go every day to the city council meeting. And he would call us all drug dealers. He'd be like, these are all fucking drug dealers. I don't want this shit in my town, but he was voting against it because he was taking bribes. You know, so he ended up getting busted by the FBI, bro. They tapped his phone. How did they do that? So, so he was taking bribes from people in dispensaries and the dispensary owners ratted on him. So they wiretapped everyone's phones (laughs) and he, the amount of money that he was taking was his mortgage. It was 1600 bucks from each dispensary. Right. So he would basically extorting them, extorting everybody, bro. 
But he never, he never came to us, right? This Mom's is another true. movie. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, no, I got crazy stories, bro. Like, <laughs> what? Like, and this is just starting the surface of the week game. Like, this crazy like, shit. Life. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I remember, bro. Like, wild shit, right? So we're sitting at a city council meeting and someone fucking sends my partner a fucking message said, hey, we found a tracking device on our car. Check your car. Right. Because at the time, the feds were wiretapping all these guys and seeing all this shit. So whoever they weren't that wasn't involved in this, they wanted to see where they were going. So they put tracking devices on their car. I'm like, bro, you guys are tripping. You guys are paranoid. Like, chill, smoke a joint, chill out. You know, like you fools are way overthinking this shit. That night I get a phone call and we always had like a crazy message. Hey, if I ever send you this message, meet me in this parking lot. This means we either been raided or someone's after us. And I got the, I'm looking at my phone. I'm like, no fucking way. <laughs> like he just sent me this fucking message. That means shit went down. So my, my immediate thing was the shop got raided. Right. So cool. We met at like this big boys in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> and then he, I, I jump in the front seat of his van. He's holding a tracking device in his hand. And I'm like, fucking motherfucker. I'm like, where'd you find that? He's like, dude, I went to the muffler shop. <laughs> I lifted up my car and I found the fucking tracking device. They're tracking my fucking car. So we're like, damn, bro. Like, what are we going to? He's like, I'm out, bro. Like, I'm done with weed. You know, I'm like, what do you mean you're done, bro? Like, <laughs> That's what most like, people said. Yeah. That. Yeah. You know? He's like, I can't yeah. do it, bro. I got a family. Like, I, I, it's just too, too fucking crazy. You know? And I remember even going to his house and he's like, dude, I watched him change the batteries on it last night, bro. I, I fucking oh. looked out my kitchen window and I watched a car pull up and they fucking put a new one on there. So I, I was kind of thinking in my head, like, dude, this is some crazy shit. Like, is this real? So we took it to the lawyer and the lawyer said they always show up and pick it up. And that's how you know you're being tracked because the feds want their fucking tracking device back. <laughs> They're not just going to be like, because once the lawyer you has it, they fucks. want that shit. Yeah, you know? yeah. So the lawyer reaches out. Oh, yeah. Well, no, they just come and automatically pick that shit up because they want their tracking device. And they like know that you know that they're there, right? But see, at the time... They weren't doing that. Sh- they were doing that shit because of all that crazy fucking sh- corrupt. But we weren't fucking with no city council members. You know what I mean? I'm paying off no fucking city official That's crazy, to bro. allow me to fucking pay them taxes. You yeah, know? for crazy. you to take all my money, I got to pay you to be in business. Like, Nine no out of ten way. times, it ends bad. Yeah, it's we've all seen bad. it all the time. It ends bad somehow. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So what happens after that? So they shut everybody down. They start freaking out, right? They're like, hey, you know, like we we know we said, you know, we were going to allow dispensaries to happen here, but, you know, we're, there's a lot of shit going on. So some of us stayed open and some of us closed, you know, and we stayed open. And it was like the hardest decision ever because it was like, bro, we got to stay open. We got to do this shit. And then at the time I had did another grow. So I'd work there and I got a couple of people to help me now in Santa Fe Springs. And then at night I, I drive to another girl and that was my spot, you know, and I had another homie that was helping me there. Was just me and him, you know, go at night, spray, feed the plants, do what you got to do, you know? And then once that should happen, then this is around the time that everyone started getting fed letters. So you basically, any dispensary got a letter that said you have 12 days to shut down or we're going to raid you. And this was like from the DEA. So it was like the craziest fucking letter ever, you know? So I'm like, let's shut down the shop, right? But I'm going to keep running the grow, right? Dude, we're medical, bro. We have patients, you know? Like at that time, we had like 10,000 fucking patients, you know? I'm like, where are all these people going to get their flour from, you know? Yeah. So we shut down the shop. And then the day we shut down the shop, the next day, see two Range Rovers pull up, boom, into the parking lot. Range Rovers? Yeah. Brand new Range Rovers. Yeah, oh, these boys are doing good. Oh, real good, bro. <laughs> Brand new, a black one and a white one. And I'm watching the cameras in the back and there's like a patient that pulled up and then the, the DA agent comes up and he grabs the door and the door's locked because want. they're literally going from shop to shop to shop. So my homies in San Diego were like, hey, they just left San Diego. They got to be coming up to five. They're going to hit fucking Santa Fe Springs next. Damn, so, shout out to them dudes. Yeah, we made sure all the doors were locked. You know, we're not open. We're out of business, you know? Yeah. So I'm sitting there watching it on the, on the cameras. And a patient pulls up and the D agent puts a, takes a picture of his license plate. And the dude like goes like, what up? He doesn't realize like, why are you taking a picture of my license plate? Dude pulls out a badge. Boom. DEA. You know? <laughs> you and the patient's look on his face is like, what? Grabs the patient's head. Boom. Hits it in the fucking back of the car. Are like, you get serious? Back in your, oh yeah, bro. Get back in your fucking car. Big oh, dude. No yeah. Way. yeah. 
dude had no idea like he's telling a dea agent like fuck you don't take a picture of my car and the dude pulls out a dea badge and slams his head on the car he was there for a pre-roll on an edible oh yeah had no idea bro (laughs) got his head no idea you know because it was hard to get the message out that we were closed people go there every day you stop by you know the shop's popping you know and now it's like all of a sudden the shop's closed but people had no idea what the fuck we were dealing with bro you know, yeah, you got a yeah. partner with a tracking device in your car. You got the city council member fucking asshole taking money from people. You got the DEA sending you fucking letters, you know. Did you like, empty the store out? You had to get all the weed out of there. Everything, bro. Yeah, so it was empty every, if they empty. came in. But yeah. we were growing in the back, bro. Ooh. We were growing in the back. Because what are you going to do, bro? Chop yeah. all your fucking plants down? Nope. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's like we went through all that so shit. They, they just left? Yeah, they left. Yeah, went on to the next shop. You know, some shops were open. I mean, bro, I seen all that. I was in, I was in LA the day they came and hit LA. I mean, they were on the different shops, DTBG, all these different shops, right? With fucking rifles on the roof, bro. AR-15s, AR-10s in the parking lot. And motherfuckers with sign spinners telling them, go down the street to my next shop. You know? Like, dude, while the DEA's closing this shop, they're telling them, hey, go right down the street. We got a shop right down the street. You know? Wow. Because th- they knew they couldn't shut down everybody. You know, it was just too big of a task. You know, at that time, the, the, the medical thing in LA was crazy, bro. There was thousands of shops, Yeah. you know? So, so they're coming in and they would literally just take everything take off. Take everything. And or shut it up. And shut it down and then move on to the next one. Jeez. You know? That's a hell of a job. That's a lot of work. They were prosecuting a lot of landlords back then. You know, they were doing all kinds of crazy shit. You know, um, there was there was landlords getting asset forfeiture. There was a few people that got rolled up. There was a few people that 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 did time for it. You know, I'm sure back in the, those there was days a guy, crazy. there was a guy in Upland that was like fully defiant, like stayed open, and he ended up doing like real Fed time. Like they busted him for it. You know, and that wasn't that long ago. You know, because the, the the problem is, is like it, like everyone sees like all the pretty part of it. You know, but Dude, a lot of guys that got here, they've been through some fucking shit. And I'm, I'm like, I'm a small piece of a lot of these guys. You know what I mean? Because there's a lot of them out there. You know, heroes the, of the industry for sure. Guys that stood tall and were like, "I'll do the time," or "I'll, I'll, we'll see." They'll, they'll break this door down for sure. Wow. You know, and I, and I think you know, like w- we had more balls because we were medical, right? So we had that to hide behind, right? But the guys that did it before us that didn't have any of that shit, those are the real G's right there. Oh, straight up. You know, no, for like, real. You know, you're gonna go to federal prison. And you're still growing weed in your house, like, dude. Psh, props to all those guys, bro. No, you know, seriously. At this time, have you and your other partner that you're with, Juice? Is yeah. It, have you guys yeah. linked up? Is that so? Yeah. So, so Juice uh, used to work wor- worked with another partner of mine, and they're in LA, and they had a spot in Chinatown, right? And their spot got raided, right? Juice has a crazy story about that. His spot area was like a three story building, and he hid in the boiler room, and they never found him. Oh yeah. hell yeah! But hell a lot yeah. of people didn't go to jail. They would raid it. Some of them would go to jail. Maybe you got a warrant for your arrest or whatever. They might hold the bud tender for a few hours just to find out who's in charge or whatever, yeah. you know. But a lot of that shit was like, all right, I got to go to court. My lawyer's going to deal with it, you know. So, so it was just it was different back then, you know. Yeah. And it was just like some people could some people could stomach it and some people couldn't stomach it, you know. Some people like were about that life and some people were like, fuck this, bro. I'm good, you know. Like I don't want to deal with this shit, you know. So yeah, so the whole Santa Fe Springs thing didn't work out. And then fast forward, like me and Juice always were homies with each other. And I would always tell him like, these are the fire ones, bro. You know, like buy these ones, bro. You know, <laughs> like I was going to all OGs back then, you know? And I remember I grew every cut of OG there was. And I like got to pick the best ones, you know? So I'm like, all right, these four right here, the legend, you know, like these few cuts that I have, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep these as kind of be my brand, you know? And so I started, started growing. And then, um, I was like, Hey, you want to do something with me, bro? And he's like, yeah, I know this guy, you know, it's this, 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 uh, prop D in, in LA TLC. I'm like, Oh, I know Frank, you know? Oh yeah, bro. Frank, you know, he's like, he, he wants to retire. He wants to get out of it. He doesn't want to be in this shit anymore. You know, he's, he's, you know, he's kind of been through the ringer and city's suing him, and, you know, he owes a bunch of money in taxes and, you know, so we hit him up. We're like, hey, bro, like we're down to start taking it over and running it for you, you know. But you got to remember at the time there was no shop, right? So to go fu- to go get a landlord that would lease a building to you was a fucking nightmare, yeah. you know, because you had to be within a thousand feet of a school or church. There was only a certain area that I'll let you put it, go in, and it was in the hood, you know, and a lot of old industrial buildings, you know. So a lot of these landlords, if they rent it to you, they would lose their loan on the building. They couldn't, they couldn't rent it to you. 
So you had to find an old school landlord that had money and that owned the building. Yeah. You know, so trying to find a 20,000 square foot building back then was almost impossible. So we would just go door to door to door to door. We would both go in separate directions and we'd be like, just go and ask if the owner's here, you know? And then one, every once in a while, you'd be like, oh, okay, yeah, the owner's in the back. Hey, man, you know, like I'm opening up this medical marijuana business, you know, it's, it's Prop D, you know, uh, uh, here's all your, you know, most of them be like, oh, I can't do it. You know, my lawyer told me this, my lawyer told me that. And then finally, we ended up getting a building, and that was the building on 23rd Street when TLC first opened up in, in South LA. So we used to be in, in South LA on the train tracks right there. Yep. And we, and, we all, we'd kind of sat in the front of it and we were like, dude, let's do something different, bro. You know, like let, let's come out with mad flavors. And at the time, uh, archive Fletch, I remember he's like, bro, come out with a clone, the same seed, the same flower, mm -hmm. the same rosin, the same everything. No one's ever done that before. You know, like there's this guy that grows this Bubba and this guy that grows this Tahoe, but no one has the hash, the rosin, the, the, at the time, you know, the key, everything, you know, the BHO. So we did it and we had all these flavors, you know, we're like, dude, we're going to open up and I'm just going to tell everyone like, bro, we got the flavors, bro. Come to us. You have like a vertical. Yeah. yeah. You know, and in Santa Fe Springs, we were vertical too, but we didn't have enough, big enough of a rhyme. And the shop was popping back then. I mean, lines out the door, people like you knew when you were putting the parking lot because there was a line of 50 cars to get in our shop, you know, because everyone wanted good weed. Good weed, always be cool as fuck to everybody and sell everything at a fair price. That's always been like, hey, bro, if I could be cool as fuck with everyone and give everyone a fair price with a really good product, I feel like you have a really good business plan. You know, that's yep. always been my business. Don't get greedy. Yeah. You know, just you're cool. You yep. know, and I kind of did the same thing when we opened up and everyone's like, oh, you could be charging way more. I'm like, no, I'm good, bro. Like, we're cool. You know, 45 bucks an eighth out the door. We're good. That's you know, we'll be blessing. interested to hear what you think about this uh, super expensive weed that was brought out. Later. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so at the end of the day, it was cool to, you know, to experience all that shit mm -hmm. because, you know, along, along the way, a million other crazy things happen, but it's like, we just kind of learned from it. You know what I mean? And we adapted. And so me and juice had already been through like the ringer and all the bullshit and all that stuff, you know? So we opened up 23rd. We start building the grow out and we didn't, we end up with like the worst inspector in the world, bro. Like he was like, we, we ended up like looking him up and his last day on the job, he got beat up from like a, like a, a, a foreman and had to retire. Cause that's what, how much of an asshole he was. I hate to laugh. And, but and it's somehow funny. we ended up with that inspector. Oh. And at the time you couldn't, you couldn't go to them and say, Hey, can I get a permit for growing cannabis? Right. Because right. LA didn't have that shit, bro. There was no pet cannabis growing permits. So how do you expect me to give a permit for my building to build out my walls and my air conditioners when you guys don't have a permitting department for it? Ooh, you know, okay. so you have to go and say you're doing like freezer storage or something. You know, you can't tell them you're growing plants because there is no check mark on the permitting process to grow plants. LA was ahead of their time, but they were 10 steps backwards when it came to giving people permits and licenses. Like everyone was growing weed and there was a shop in every store and not one person had a fucking permit. <laughs> it, it's you almost, know? it mimics this now, but of like the evolution of it, right? Where it's like, it's a great idea, but it's now it's like huge barrier. Same thing. Figure oh, yeah. it out. Just figure it out. Yep. It could be massive barriers just yep. like you went through. Yeah. So, so back then you had different barriers than you do now. Right. So we, we went through that whole entire thing, got the inspector, asshole inspector, took us way longer than expected, finally got up and then it was like, cool. And then, you know, it was like we had one room, we were growing one style and then another room, we were going another style, cocoa beds, cocoa pots, you know, but same shit, you know, always share everything we did with everybody, you know, like we were always like, hey, here's the ups, here's the downs, you know, and I remember yeah. it was like one of the first the cannabis pages on Instagram. You know, and people are like, you're fucking crazy. You're going to show your face and everything. And I'm like, bro, this is my life, bro. This is what we do. We're, we're, we're medical. We're in LA. Like, here's all of our patients. Like, it doesn't get more legit than this, bro. You know, because yeah. yeah. if this isn't legit, I don't know what to fucking say is legit. We're paying our fucking taxes. We're doing all the paperwork correctly. The city knows what we're doing, you know? So I'm like, fuck it. So we were growing big, tall, vertical plants with side lights 
And one of the girls that worked there came in and she, she, she like need to get a hold of someone. She's like, damn, it looks like a jungle in here. You know? <laughs> and we're like, dude, we're, we had plants that were like 12 feet tall in, indoors, you know, like Holy insane shit. shit, you know, vertical bulbs burning our arms. I still got scars, you I know? Me- I remember <laughs> I saw that one time in Colorado. It looked like they were growing Christmas trees inside. Oh, yeah. yeah. Fucking insane. Yeah. And so we do one room that way and then we do one room with just adjust the wings and like cocoa pots, you know, or cocoa beds or whatever my, my style of growing, you know? And it was like, fuck this shit's hard, bro. You know, problems, this problem, but we always had dank weed. We always had fire weed, you know, and everything that I would learn and all the mistakes, I would go share with everyone either online or on Instagram, you know, like, and people would be like, dude, why are you giving everyone game, bro? <laughs> Like, stop telling everyone how you do this shit. I'm like, dude, if there could be five other guys that are doing the same shit as me and we're all competition and we're going against each other, that's dope, bro. Because we're just going to make each other better. You know, like this yeah. guy's going to push me to grow even more dank shit, you know? Yeah. And, and we're, you know, we're all homies, bro. You know, yeah. it was you guys against the system too. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You know? Yeah. See, that's what people tend to forget. It's always been that way. I know. Yeah, yeah. Still it's like is. People yeah. forget about that though, and they want to go at each other, and it's like there's no time for that. Oh no, bro! Not it's in like, this life. No, you you like you got to support every, especially in this world, like this industry, this world, bro. Like like if someone's coming in, bro, you need help. We're we're helping you with open arms, bro. Like like let me help you out. Let, you might not like everything I'm saying because I'm gonna be real with you, and I'm gonna tell you, hey, this shit's gonna be hard as fuck. You know, you're gonna lose money. You're going to cry. You're going to have good days. You're going to have good harvest. You're going to have bad harvest, but we got to all support each other, bro. You know, that's why my store has always been, you know, we've been open to everybody. If you come down, you have flour and you were a vendor back then. And whether you lived in Humboldt or you were in San Diego and you got fire flour, bring it to the store, bro. You always have a spot on our shelf. No, that's for sure. You know, and that's how we were when we even when it turned over rec. We're like, dude, any of the homies that that started there, if you hit me up on Instagram, you're like, hey, bro, I started my come bring it down, bro. Yep. If it's fire, if you think it's fire enough to be on our shelf, you know, then bring it up, put it on the shelf. All right, know? so yeah, we'll let it be there, basically, yeah. right? That's the business model. Yeah, I mean, look at look it's at retail. When, yeah, look at chalice, right? When we did that whole when we had that crazy chalice booth. I was going to you know, ask you yeah. about that. I mean, I mean, you guys basically took that whole event over. Yeah, you I mean, the Ferris, Ferris wheel. was something I'll never forget. Think about that event, bro. Inside of our building, we had Burner. That shit was Burner, Burner was trapping Ace out of his backpack. Yes, bro. Right? That <laughs> shit, yo, that shit, that shit was um, packed the entire event. Yeah, no, bro. It's, that whole building was you packed had the entire strain, event with lines the yeah. entire time. A it strain was, labeled Ferris shout wheel. Shout out to all those butt tenders and girls <laughs> yeah. that are they're oh, packing they're, those they're, quarter they're, jar, they're like trappers, bro. That, that is insane. Those, those, girl, those some of those girls they outwork, still work. They outwork a lot of these boys. Oh for no, <laughs> yeah. To tell us the tell us who was in your booth though, because we remember we circled that yeah. thing thirty times, bro. We yeah. loved it. So Capulator was in my booth. Fucking uh, Sea Junkie was in my booth. Was right? it obsolete? Obs Ob- was in my mm-hmm. bo- booth. Compound Genetics was in my booth. Bro, hold you know on. what I mean. Like yep. burner, I remember burner was like, fuck, I told him, dude, bring down clothes, bring down whatever you got, you know, like w- whatever you could sell, bring down to sell it, you know? And I remember like, dude, we got to give you weed, bro. Here's some fucking weed, you know? <laughs> like, and then a bunch of other of his homies gave him weed, you know what I mean? And, but he was just like blown away by that shit, you know? Like tripping. We were tripping too. I remember telling everyone this shit will never happen again in our lifetime. Yeah. What do you mean? I'm like, bro, this shit will never happen. Next year, this will not be here, bro. Wow, you, know? you knew it. You knew. Oh, hell yeah, dude. You guys went hard. No, talk about that a little bit about that event. And talk about what year this is. Yeah, I mean, how long ago was that chalice? That chalice was... 2017, I think? 2018? Maybe 16 or 17. Yeah, it was 16 17. or 17. Because I remember it was I like... I think it was 17. First, yeah, the first year. And then after that was the good one. And then after that, See that, it was like everything went downhill. The second one was the one. Yeah. Like you said, yeah. epic. You guys had a Ferris wheel. You had a whole fair. Like, yeah, it was pretty like, much you know, put the whole thing on. Yeah. I, I think we thought like, listen, this is a way. Imagine if cannabis was legal, right? Because everyone's going to show up with their medical card, right? And it's an event that's cool. Get it. Yeah. Every, the vibes are cool. It's chill. It's hot as fuck in the middle of the spare or wherever we were at, you know, but that's Same the only place that would allow us to have a venue. Welcome yeah. to cannabis. Yeah. You know, and Dougie was doing this thing back then. Yeah. 
You know, it's but like, just let us have that open field like you had that. Oh my God. Dude, imagine if today we could have that same event, bro. Like, dude, that's, like, a, that's a, that was an international event. Rest in peace, Frenchie Cannoli. That's yep. how we got to meet him. Yeah. I mean, tons of people, but go on with that. Like, yeah, what, Charles what was, was dope vibes. That's bro. how cannabis should be. That's how cannabis should be. How, how much figuratively did you guys like sponsor on that time? Like, I I don't remember what I don't uh, I don't remember it, I don't remember what we did maybe like a couple hundred grand wow you know definitely. what I mean because we had to get a fair as well we had to bring fair, everyone yeah. out here or whatever you know what I mean but yeah. bro I mean you're talking Dally style Dally style weighing ace I don't even know what your numbers were like of people bro what were your numbers okay? like I mean, millions of dollars bro <laughs> yeah yeah you know yeah but, straight but, out of duffels right oh yeah, well, yeah. that's the thing right Full it's like, how they did. Full yeah. menu, full menus, branded right? bags, everything. Yeah, Brand, yep. uh, branded gold jars. There you, you go. Know? No, they were they were the plastic tubes, bro. Yeah, plastic yeah. tubes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, but what? Imagine this, right? Now it's like, okay, if someone wants to buy an eighth, right? This is what you get when you buy an eighth, right? Mm -hmm. This is prepackaged, ready to go, right? I put it in a bag. The person walks out the door. They can pre-order this, right? Imagine that person had it, wanted to come up and they wanted to smell all seventy-five flavors, <laughs> right? Because we had seventy-five flavors, right? Each jar had to be open. They could smell it, right? Yep. Then they would be like, okay, I want an eighth of this one. I want a quarter of this one. I want an eighth of this one, right? Up to eight ounces, because that's what your medical limit was, right? Where well, you're doing this for thousands of people three days in a row, you know? And the line never, ever, ever stops, you know? It's like those girls, those girls, those are the real MVPs right no, there. For yeah, real, for real. You know? Yeah, for that's sure. why I said that yeah. for real, because yeah. they they make your whole operation. Yeah, for still sure. to this day. Oh, yeah. Like, still yeah, to this day. For like, sure. It's fucking awesome to see. And I, I remember the tubes, man. Like I remember those days yeah. and like you, you guys killed it out of that event. That was like the event that I'll never forget. Yeah. yeah. You bought like, your limit. Yeah. That was like my, my, my best event ever that we, and we were glad to have a booth there. We were yeah. honored to have a booth there. It's big for us. You know what yeah. I mean? And then you imagine but, like now they don't allow us to do shit like that, bro. No, it's just like <laughs> over overnight, you know? And to be real with you on the East Coast, events are everywhere. Yeah. But you can have Every single the beer night. fest. It's very similar to that, right? It's like a beer fest, but for pot. And you can have the beer fest. People can get sloppy drunk. You could even get alcohol. But that's what it was. It was a freedom fest for cannabis. It's a beer fest, but yep. out in the middle of nowhere, not harming anybody. Nope. It was amazing. And yeah. it was something to be seen. I mean, we're from Florida and, and it was, I mean, even you being in California, it was something to be seen. Oh, no, it, was it, was, unbelievable. it was like one of the coolest things we ever did. You know, we did the high times events, you know what I mean? Like those yeah. were cool too. Back in the day, high times events used to be cool. You know, yep. mm -hmm. they'd always pull some weird shit and there'd always be some, Oh, this Love happened. Awards. That, oh <laughs> yeah. You can't play a, you can't play the super bowl because we're going to get sued. Like that's when you can't, uh, high times trading in corporate. But before then there was some cool events that they had also, you know, yeah. but yeah, Charles was was like going back it's like everyone always says remember chalice dude that shit was epic yeah what you was know? the lead up because we skipped a big part there yeah what was the lead up there where you finally got your place tlc yeah and then and then it leads up to chalice and whatever like so basically at that point you know we were, we were at tlc we were growing going through a bunch of shit city lawsuits you know we we're, were dealing with the old licensing stuff all that stuff you know um it was just you know and then it was like we kind of created the jungle boys you know and it was like hey we started the instagram you know and i remember we had jungle boys for a while and it got deleted and we were jungle boys with a z you know because our instagram would get to even back then yeah. it would get deleted you yeah. know it started with that girl coming in though and yep. saying this looks like a jungle yep and then juice was like yeah we're the jungle boys you know <laughs> and i remember she like drew a picture of it you know and and it was like it's probably still around somewhere you know and it's kind of that's just kind of they're just like organic you know it was like nothing was like forced or you know we didn't sit in a room like oh let's try to make a brand you know yeah so yeah we, we and at that time it was like there was no real weed brands you know like i think you know of course burners was burner was selling you know cookie shirts and stuff like that but they didn't have cannabis you know what I mean? They didn't, they weren't growing, they weren't, they didn't have dispensaries, you know? So we kind of just did our thing over there. And then every time we'd sell all our flour, we never had enough flour, you know? Cause in the back we only had, you know, all together was maybe like 150, 200 lights, you know? And then the whole prop D, D thing was kind of like, okay, we know in the next couple of years, legalization is going to happen. And when the legalization happens, you got to be ready to go, you know? And we thought, 
when legalization happened, it was just going to be like they flipped the light switch and it, we were legal now. Of course, California fucked that one all up. You know, it took forever. <laughs> you know, we no one was sure when we were going to open, when we could open, when it would be legal. Was it going to be track and trace? Wasn't going to be track and trace? What do you have to do? How does this work? You know, we're like, oh, cool. Now we'll be able to be in every single city and do all this shit. And it was a complete opposite. You know, it was like a bunch of red tape. No one knew what they were doing and everyone was kind of on their own. You know, and it's like, here we go again, back to square one, right? Like, we thought we finally made it and we're going to be okay. And now, you know, we're legalizations here. You know, and I think that, that the last, whatever, four or five years of legalization has probably been like some of the hardest four or five years. You know, obviously the past was di- difficult, but it was spread over time where I told you guys earlier, I feel like the last four or five years is like being a fast forward, like the fastest fast forward you could go. That's how we're all just running around trying to make this shit work, you know, cause it's fucking so difficult with all the red tape, you know, the red tape just makes it fucking hard, you know? People are sure. glad to hear that though. Cause they don't see that from the outside a lot. They think you guys, it's just nothing but birthday cakes and champagne bottles. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But, I wish bro. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, it's been, you know, it's like you got to adapt constantly, right? It's like you want to build a new spot out. You can just be fully permit, fully licensed, right? The city doesn't allow license. So you have to do a, you know, you have to figure out a way to, to convince the city to do it. So you have to do a bunch of application stuff and convince them that this is better. Some people do a development agreement. Some people, city will hand out a limited amount of licenses, you know, and then some people were doing like lotteries and there's just, it was fucking crazy, you know? So we're like, let's just hunker down in LA right now and let everyone else figure their stuff out. So thing about it is we were always able to stay open under medical though, you know? So that was like our thing. So moved in the TLC building, which we're at now, right? Old crazy building built in like the 1900s, like a hundred year old bomb bunker, basically, you know, it works, it works, wow. though. There, there was not it even works. any drainage inside that building. And we're, Holy we're, shit. there's a CVS on the first floor, as most people know, and we have the second, third and fourth floor. Right. And I'm sitting there looking at this building, like, dude, how are we going to get all the fucking water out of this building, bro? You know, mm. like where's the drainage system for this building? You know, this is a concrete building with the CVS below us, you know, <laughs> and remember like, uh, a couple of days into construction, I get a call from the landlord. There's water on Olympic Boulevard. <laughs> and I'm like doing the math in my head. I'm like, for water to go on Olympic Boulevard, it either has to be the giant water main or they broke the sprinkler main. They're like, get over here right now. And there was like an old valve in a wall and someone was removing drywall and the valve just popped off and literally flooded the whole entire building, like water coming down the stairwells into the parking lot of TLC. Oh, Oh, wow. And I'm like, this is going to be fucking fun. (laughs) (laughs) And we're like in CVS, in the back of CVS, like mopping up all the water. I'm like, bro, this is how we're going to start coming to the neighborhood. Like this is our welcoming is us flooding. See, we got that. these girls <laughs> hear about stories like that. Oh. Where you're down with a mop in CVS, oh, thinking, yeah. "How are we gonna get this thing built?" Oh, I hope yeah. you got pictures of that. That's oh, insane. Yeah, really? We have fun. I can't even imagine that. I've yeah. been there plenty of times. Yeah. So we ended up then the then we had the Catholic Church protesting us because they didn't want us there, <laughs> and a lot of the people from the Catholic Church, like the little ladies, didn't even know why they were protesting us. They were just told that you this guys should have vlogged this, this shit, evil man. marijuana company. <laughs> was coming in you know what i mean like crazy and they'd be out there with picket signs you know they hated us you know and they're like marijuana is bad and we're just like dude we're about to we're about to hire hundreds of people you know fill this whole entire building up that's been vacant in boyle heights you know make it way nicer the food for less is going to be busy the cvs is going to be busy we're going to have security here like no other businesses are coming to the state of california everyone's moving the fuck out You know, they should open up, they should welcome us with open arms, you know, but we were never welcome with open arms. It was just a battle about about a lawsuit, this, that, you know, we started getting sued by Food for Less because we were ruining the neighborhood, you know, all this bullshit, you know? So it was, it's, it's always been a battle, you know, it's always, it's always been a fight, but we just keep, keep going, keep going, keep going. You know, every once in a while you sit there like, oh, this one hurts, bro. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, Ooh, I got to pay what legal fees. Oh, I got to pay this. You know, it's like, oh, you know, but we always loved the plant and we loved what we did. You know what I mean? So, and we always had a passion for it and everyone smokes and everyone enjoys it, you know? So I think that's, that's why we always just kind of kept going and kept going and kept going. You know what I mean? And it's like, we had a lot of people depend on us too. You know, we always felt like, 
dude, if we, if we go out, you know, like we got to show everyone like, bro, you can make it. If you, if you come from nothing, you work hard, you could 100% make it, you know, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Everyone in the world's looking at what you guys are doing and what you've been doing. It's been unbelievable from the beginning to see rooms like that. You've been setting standards from, from just like where you're talking from the multiple beginning. Multiple angles. Yeah. yeah. And the influence reaches far. I was in, in La Colada and Barcelona um, over the summer, and they got the same artist as you guys, who's actually from right outside there. Is it Capin? Saturno? Yeah. Oh, Saturno. 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 Yeah. Saturno. In Saturno's Spain yeah. to do their whole wall. Yeah. And they said they did that because they went to TLC and yeah. were inspired by you guys. And super dope, man, just to see it all come yeah, together. Yeah, we used to have a really cool Jungle Boy uh, 3D piece when you first came in. And part of our Food for Less lawsuit when they sued us was they wanted that piece painted over. And I fought them and I fought them and I fought them on it. And I have court and millions of dollars and legal fees and all this shit. And I'm finally like, bro, if that's the last thing I got to do, I'll do it. You know what I mean? Like, but it's been a battle, bro. It's, it's, it's been tough, you know, but like, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Yeah. The view's you know nice, I mean? man. Yeah. It's cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> now that that shit's built. All, yeah. All the blood, sweat and years, bro. And yeah. being from here, it's like you put your flag in the ground and you guys have a place where you could be so proud of where you're at and what you've accomplished. It was a big statement at a big time. Yeah. The Raws and Presses. I mean, yeah. you guys were setting standards with that. You would literally buy an eighth and then go get an eighth pressed out into Rosin. Fresh. Oh, no. The deals, bro, we, we, didn't, charge to, we didn't charge to press the Rosin, right? We we're selling eighths at, you know, 40, 45 bucks. And you can basically go get Rosin press and you end up the Rosin that you'd press be worth double of what the flour you pressed, you know? But we were all just like, dude, we're, we're all about the people. We're all about what we do. We're about this industry. And all we, all we can do is be mad cool and show everyone how to do it. And, you know, hopefully at the end we end up winning, bro. You know, like we never had a plan. We never had like this vision. I'm, I'm, you know how many times I was like, if someone gives me $5 million right now, I'll sell all this shit, you know, <laughs> like dude, five, like, you know how much $5 million is, bro? Like I didn't come from money, bro. I never yeah. had $5 million. You know, I used uh, to yeah. say it all the time. Like I remember just be like stressed out, bro. Two million dollars right now. I'll walk away. You could take everything. Bro. Yeah, you know, you know what you could do with that. You're like, I could do this again, or I could do whatever I yeah. want. Then you know, yeah. that was a lot of money, and my partner Juice would never let me. Nah, bro, nah. <laughs> you know, he'd be like, Nah, we we can't give up now, bro. Like, where else are we gonna do? You know, like what what we don't have anything. This is what we know. You know, so we just kept going and pushing and pushing and pushing. But you know, I think that the whole goal was like, dude, we'd just be happy to always have a spot always grow good flower do cool shit come up with new designs you know be innovative always be in the grow room coming up with new ideas and that's all we ever wanted you know that was like that was like the plan you know all along you know and then california just started making it tougher and tougher and tougher you know it was like every month it was like bro like we're not we're really not making money right now in california you know people are like yeah right you guys are rich you guys are making it rain yeah. blah 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 and you're like no bro <laughs> like running a legit cannabis business in california in the city of los angeles is fucking brutal bro you know no other business has to pay the taxes the fees the regulation the testing the everything the, the amount of money we pay on rent electricity every like at the end of the day it's like bro this is fucking tough they don't realize that this the even your shirts and stuff your apparel has to be separated store wise because or you have to pay your cannabis tax on yep. your apparel yep insane yep i mean look at look at 280e bro most people don't even know what 280e is you Where know you can't write anything off no you know and and most you do you, you tell people like oh have you ever been hurt uh what are you talking like yeah. like, <laughs> like oh the customer pays most the tax. accountants don't know yeah they're like oh i don't really get into that but then they want to bitch about a 50 dollar eighth or a 60 dollar eighth or a tax you know it's like listen i get it yeah. right bro i get bitching about a 60 or 70 or 80 dollar eighth but we're not fucking making 60 or 70 or 80 dollars an eighth you know mm. and, and at the end of the day even being vertically integrated it's like when you look at what it ch costs to make it Right. You got to pay your employees. You got to pay your employees taxes. You got to pay your employees, uh, uh, workman's comp, all that shit. Right. You got to pay to produce it. You got to pay your electricity. Uh, uh, like in the old days, you do the math, right. And you're like, I'm rich, bro. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. 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 Two like, pounds yeah. of light. 
Fuck this in. is it. Forty five hundred dollars a pound. I'm good. Two harvest. You know what? This year I'm gonna work and I'm gonna retire at the end of the year because I'm gonna be so rich. I'm gonna be able to retire. You know how many times I said that? <laughs> People forget too that it's a live plant and it doesn't always do what you want it to do. It's not the same every run. It's not the same. Every, so you're gonna you know you know it's like yeah yeah five runs a year yeah yeah, yeah. and <laughs> and you know and then it's also like and everyone will be an A yep. somewhere in the A range you know and. Yeah. It, People yeah. just don't understand. It's a live plant. It's like dealing with a person. For sure. And then to do it on scale and to do it on a big scale and have all eyes on you and knowing that you have the best product and knowing that you got to keep up to a standard because you've set the bar high, right? We set it high, right? So it's like everyone kind of took a different direction in this industry. You know, some people had a brand and they they collaborated with another brand and then other people have a big brand and some of those people don't even own a they own a, own a small piece of it you know but we kind of always controlled everything we did you know we never we never ever ever let anybody take a piece of our shit you know we always kept it to ourselves you know i, I know this so is you guys are fully bootstrapped one thousand percent fully Ooh, bootstrapped wow. right? huge shout out you Yo, don't know what that takes. That's no, like. I mean, that's anybody insane. think about that. That's crazy, bro. Yeah, we've we've never taken a penny from anybody, bro. Like, like we built everything we had. And the thing about this industry, right, is you gotta remember, we we didn't have we never had banking, bro. No. We couldn't go buy a house. I couldn't go buy a nice car. I couldn't do any of that shit. All I could do is put my money back in my business and buy more lights and rent more warehouses and buy more tables. That's all I could and do R and D and research and all that shit to figure out what how I can get more yield and better yield and all that. because we didn't have fuck we till to this day my bank account gets shut down every couple months you know and I don't put any cash in my bank account all legit money because they look me up they say oh this guy owns a cannabis business boom bank account shut down you know so wow. it's like all these all these real oh. cannabis business operate we're not a public if you're a public company sure you have money in the bank. <laughs> But a regular bootstrap company, go try to open up a bank account. That's yeah. not happening. You can't do it. No. You know, Wells Fargo, you're going to say, oh, I own a TLC in Los Angeles and I want to uh, deposit a million dollars a week in cash. Yeah, fucking right. <laughs> <laughs> not happening. This ain't Colombia. So, so, no. yeah. so what do you, what's Miami? the solution? The solution is they pass some legislation that mm -hmm. allows cannabis to have fucking yeah. banking, bro. Yes. You know, it's like, <laughs> yes, do people have some sort of credit in this and that, but personal banking and it's very difficult. Yeah. There, there, there's, there's, they have really made it difficult for anybody to do anything in this, you know, and that's why, like, I'll never, ever, I'll always be from LA. I'll always love this city. But when I, when I get mad about it, it's just out of passion, right? It's like, bro, like, you can't hold someone's hands like this and charge them these fees and these taxes and all this shit and expect anybody to want to stay in the state and keep putting money back in the state. You know, it's like, you got to start looking elsewhere. What was the conversation we had when we came here? It's like, bro, you're looking around like California and LA. It's like, why would I open up a cannabis business when the, when the biggest, best guys out there that have no debt are barely fucking making it? Yeah. You know, and when I say barely making it, I'm talking about, Bro, imagine spending, you have to fire up a new facility, right? You want to, you want to do a thousand lights. You spend 15 million bucks on that facility because it has to be permitted, licensed. You have to dig trenches. Yeah. Everything has to be by the code, right? You have to reinforce the building. You're spending a lot of money on this, right? And it takes you five years, bro. You know, and now you're 15 million in, but you paid rent for five years, right? And you paid your licensing fees for five years, right? How do you ever get out of that hole? You know, how are you expected to get a hole when the guys that already paid all that shit off are barely making money? And you're taxed at 28 to 36%. You can't write anything off. Uh, all on that. On and on and on. Yeah, and yeah. On you can't have banking. Yeah. It's hard yeah. to hire people for payroll. Oh, yeah. You got to figure that out. Yeah. You, we, we can't go get a loan, bro. There's no fucking loans. You know, it's like people are like, oh, when there's a fire, you have insurance. Yeah, fucking right. The only insurance that ever worked for me is car insurance, bro. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like yeah, once yeah. they said cannabis, oh, you didn't do this right. You don't have this right permit, all this shit. It's fucking difficult. Bro. What do you think about collaborations? Collaborations in business or collaborations with brands? I think it's I think it's good, especially if it's like you know, you know someone out there that that it has a reputation that you can trust them and you know that, you know, it's it's it all has to be documented now. It all all the the days of handshakes are long over, bro. Yeah. Unfortunately. You know, because that's how we got here was on handshakes. You know, we never did no contracts. You know, we were all just like, hey, you're my boy and this is your percentage. And this is my percentage and we're going to the moon. You know, yeah. 
now it's like everything has to be in a contract, you know? How did you make the switch from really coming from the street in and start buttoning your stuff up, man? Because like, I know it's, you know, in the story, it sounds broad, but it's like, that's a big part of it is like being able to get your paperwork together and really like run into code. And how did you build your team and and figure all that part out? And to this day, like, how do you operate having to run at that scale with so many moving parts? And, you know, it's insane because it's like, stealing employ like all oh, these yeah. things with oh. dealing with cash got to be hard yeah i mean bro we've had managers rip us off people still packs our buildings have been broken into lost millions we've had all that shit happen but i think for our crew it's always been like word of mouth it's always been like hey my brother my cousin my uncle my niece you know like close ties like i tell you like my daughter is the manager of tlc you know like my nephew Aaron heads up all the cultivation, you know what I mean? At one of the bigger facilities, you know what I mean? And then it's like, oh, my cousin. And then it's like, oh, uh, you know, Aaron's friend that he, we call them the Kirkland boys because they all they all worked at Costco together, you know? So it's like everyone, and then Juice has his crew of all the guys that have been with him for 15 years. And it's like, we got here out of necessity, right? So these people aren't educated people. These people aren't, you know, and then along the way, we'll be like, okay, let's hire a compliance person that did it in another state like Colorado and let's bring this compliance person in and make them part of the team because they're going to teach us all this stuff, you know? But I mean, we, we never had, you know, CEOs, CFOs, you know, board meetings, you know, because it was just us, you know, yeah. like a lot of people think we're like big from the outside. Like we look over this massive company, you know, but we do everything ourselves, you know, I don't have a fucking assistant. You know, I'm the only guy with the password to Instagram, whether that's a good or bad thing. I don't know. You know what I mean? It's probably a yep. bad thing, you know, yeah. but it's like, we just got here because we just, we just adapted and we survived, you know, we did, you know, we were, we always just took care of everyone around us, you know, and you made that sound simple, but it's not that you also put in the work, you survived, you ducked the bullets and dodged you, you, it's about the culture, you built. sweat and tears. Yeah, it's about the culture you built. And I, the key thing you said is that it was word of mouth. Someone knew someone and there's a tie there, you know, and I think that's super crucial. So moving forward to talk about your Florida project, man, how are you kind of handling everything out there? Yeah. So Florida, we've kind of taken a separate, a different approach to that thing because we're like, listen, there's no way that we can expand our business and we'd be the only ones that do everything, you know? No. So we hired a team out there, you know, a team that, you know, a, a real CEO, you know, someone that, you know, can, can find us real estate, you know, like, let's run this like a real business now, you know, and listen, it gets to the point now where it's like, all right, listen, at the end of the day, I'm not greedy, you know, if I have to give up a percentage of my company, you know, which I've never had to still to this day, you know, but to bring people on, I think I'm at that point now where like, listen, bro, there's a couple points there. Where we could bring real people on to do this. And we're like at that point now, you know? So I think with the whole Florida thing is just like, we're like, we went in there and we kept telling them like, bro, if this shit takes four or five years for, for electricity, we're not interested. And we were like, listen, it's not like that here. You know? And we're like, you know, we've heard that before. We've heard that before, you know? <laughs> And it's like, you go in there, we lease the building, you ask for power. Three months later, we have power. Like we're sitting there like, what the fuck? That same power we've been waiting for five, six years in LA, you know? And then you Damn. go to the city, you turn in a permit and two weeks later, they give you your stamped approval. Here's your permits. Those same permits have been sitting in LA for two and a half years. Wake up LA, you know? man. And you're just like, dude, Florida is beautiful, bro. You know, and you're like, why the fuck can LA be like this? Why can't California be like this? You know, the beaches are different too. Yeah. Like not even a beach. It's totally different. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. Yeah. You know, it's just Florida is just different. You know, Yeah, they love but good cannabis. The thing about it is they're business friendly, bro. You yep. know, and yep. when you have a real business friendly. It's like, why is Why are all these big companies moving out of California? You know, it's because you want to go to a state that allows you to work and make money you don't want to tie any business's hands you know so i think it's just been like a big relief for us you know and it's like we know we're in it for the long haul you know we're not in it to to you know get rich over there or anything where it's, it's going to be the long game you know but i think that everything we learned here we're able to take there and just you know make a mirror of it but without all the bullshit. You know, like, of course, there's going to be bullshit. Of course, there's going to be problems. Of course, you're going to always have issues. 
but the the red tape bullshit of California and LA is big for a business for sure. Yeah, man. And like one of the things I've been wondering about, and I know we talked about is the exotics line you guys rolled out with burner and like, I mean, the shopping cart with the packs and like, you, I mean, you guys were, no one was doing it like that. Yeah, I think the artwork. Yeah, I, I think uh, I always respected um, what Burner was doing. And, you know, I think he had like a cool, you know, with like his clothing line back then. You know, I remember being at Chalice with him and it was like, dude, you got the clothing line. You know, I have all the weed, you know. So it was like I helped him with the weed part. He helped me with the clothing line part, you know, because that's how we always are with everybody. We're like, hey, bro, let me let me break it down to you, you know. And I would always tell him like, bro, you just need your one spot that you own, bro. You know, like maybe like a thousand lights, 500 lights or whatever. And one shop that you own by yourself, bro. You know, and then you're set, you know, the staple. Yeah. You know, it's like, that's your spot. No one else owns it. You know, no, no one else can say, you know, just, just one bro, you know, cause that's how we always did it. You know, it was like, we always made sure we owned everything, you know? So no one could ever come, you know, say, oh, I own this. I have these shares, blah, blah, blah. We're like, no, we're keeping this shit all to ourselves, you know? <laughs> so I think we kind of put each other on game. He put me on the clothing. I put him on the cannabis stuff, you know, and then he was already doing some stuff with Reef, you know? And I was like, let's, let's, let's do this, you know? So we, we went up in Seattle. That shit was popping, you know? But I think at the time we were kind of both going in different directions, you know, like, uh, we both helped each other out. You know, I helped him on the cannabis part of it, you know, even told him like some deals that he came like, nah, bro, ask for more, bro. You know, like you're worth way to me, bro. Like, you know, you're worth more than that, you know? So we kind of helped each other out like that. But then with the whole legalization and the craziness, you know, it's like, oh, I'm opening up a spot right here. You have a spot right here. We're like, bro, you know what we went through to fucking be able to stay open here? We've been in a lawsuit with the city for 15 years. You know, we've been fucking raided, you know, uh, food for less is suing us, you know? So when someone says, Hey, we're going to open up right here, you know, it's like, all right, like no issues, fucking do your thing, open up right there, you know? But I think we just kind of had like different paths we were going in, you know, where we were like, Hey, we just want to hunker down and, and, and build this one shop and maybe open another shop. He was going to do big things and, you know, do multiple licensing deals and branding deals and all that shit, which is, which is dope, you know? But that was, we were just like, let's just... I always thought about it like this, like if I owned, you know, a hundred percent of something that was worth, you know, a billion dollars, I own 5% of something that's worth a billion or $2 billion. Right. I always felt like I always wanted to, to be in control of where I ended up in the very end of it. You know what I mean? Mm. So we kind of just started doing our own thing. He started doing his own thing or whatever. And you know, like still to this day, we're fucking, you know, like, like we've made men's on, on things that we had issues on back in the day, you know, but I think that, you know, you got to respect someone that's a father, you know, someone that, that hustles and, you know, someone that, you know, is on their grind every single day. You got to respect those people, you know, like we might yeah. have differences or, you know, I might think different about different things, but at the end of the day, it's like, bro, you got to respect people, bro. You know? No, for sure. And, and I think I respect everyone in this industry, you know, like, at the end of the day, you got to give props where props is due and you just tell your story and they have their story, you know, and, and, you know, we're, we're, we both might be wrong, we both might be right, or, you know, we're both telling the same story, you know what I mean? That's, that's how I feel about it, you know? Yeah, no, nah, for sure. Another interesting thing was, uh, what was it like with Dan Bozerian, the whole Ignite experience? That was fucking interesting. You know, I, I, my first impression of Dan was he's really fucking cool. Yeah, like, I bet. Hell, I, bet. Yeah. I, I, I could see that. He started telling us like this crazy story how he bet his friend for a shark and his friend ended up putting a shark in his pool, like some crazy story. And when he left, he was like, I remember we had a pound of purple punch and he was like all obsessed with purple punch. And I'm like, nah, bro, you don't want this one. You know, like there, there, there's other shit. You know, he's like, no, this is the one. You I know? remember like, that first. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then. <laughs> he went on his social media and he like did a bunch of videos and shit of our girl and never tagged us. And we're like, bro, this is your intro to the weed company. You can't even be like, Hey, I'm in the jungle boys, bro. You can't act like it's yours and shit, you know? So it, after that, we kind of just like poked at him a few times, you know what I mean? But it was like, we were always like, dude, when we met him in person, he was cool. Yeah. You know, 
we knew the whole ignite shit was crazy and fucking selling cbd was just like not the route we wanted to take you know what i mean yeah, yeah. but yeah that that whole thing was fucking interesting you know was he trying to get you guys to like license out oh, some yeah. stuff and oh yeah. yeah he wanted to do like a collab with like a vape pen and like a bunch of other stuff you know and at the time i was just like i don't know bro you know <laughs> like you you gotta do a collab with someone that's been in the industry you know that's yeah, how yeah, i always yeah, felt yeah, about yeah. it's it, culture you know? driven for sure how do you how do you feel about that like just coming from your era and seeing all the say you know a lot of the stages i should say um how do you feel about where the culture's at today i mean it's interesting right i think that this whole thc percentage thing is completely out of hand you know it's so fucking ridiculous how you know? oh is my that? gosh yeah, i mean listen bro we don't have people buy flour in our shop if it's 25 percent thc you know like it could be the dankest flour ever you know high in terps you know smell incredible gets you super high but if it's 25 percent in thc they don't want it really oh yeah bro the thc oh, game is fucked up in la people and California. educate himself yourself Who's preaching Jeez. the thc talk you know i think it's just the streets are that way bro you know like that's like i think it's that's i think it's the shop shit. consumer though no shops yeah for yeah, sure. yeah shop i'm talking consumer, about because yeah. i i talk with the homie in alien labs shout out to ted but he, yeah. he always mentions like people that you know go in shops or it's a different dynamic than what you would think for, listen, if you're a real smoker and you smoke every single day, obviously you're always like, dude, I want the Terps. Yeah. You know what I mean? I want something that's going to get me high and I want the Terps, you know? But for whatever reason, you know, there's a lot of people that go inside and they're like, you know, it's 32%, you know? It's like, I got to have this one. You're like, no, this one's fire right here. You know what I mean? Like that one's fire too, but this one's super fire. Like, oh no, it's 25%. Do you think like the alcohol market like train consumers to like focus on I don't Probably know. Not. Yeah, I, that's kind of crazy, I, right? I don't know. I think I think people just their brain correlates higher THC to better. You I know? yes. Because we've had people tell us, oh, this batch was 31% THC and this one was 30 and this one's better. And I'm like, no fucking way. That one's way better, you know? But and they don't realize when they test, they test random parts of the plant. Right. So we basically put 50 pounds inside of a big bin and they randomly pick a nug, right? So that batch, they could have got a top nug. Right. So that batch was 32%. And then the next batch, they picked the bottom nug. So that would, pass, but that batch was also a lot bomber than this one, you know? So it's like to educate people, it's like we've tried, you know, we've told them over and over and over again. But I think it's just maybe time, you know what I mean? Time of everyone just getting the message out there. Like, listen, is there mm -hmm. high THC stuff that's great? Of course. Anyone that tells you that high THC shit that's frosty is no good bullshit. Yeah. You know, fire is fire. Fire. Yeah, you know, exactly. Fire is fire, right? But you can't tell me that this 25% trop cherry right here that's dank as hell is, is not as good as this one because it's 25%. No way. It's With not like 3% terps on the flower, it's so loud. Like, exactly. I mean, it literally screams. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Every yeah. hit to the last hit, every every piece you type, it, it stinks. Your your fingers get dyed. I've seen it. We yep. have actually purchased it. Yeah, it's yep. crazy. Yep. These rosin pens are fire. They're so good. Bro. <laughs> That's my go-to. I mean, like, yeah. you put five in your pocket and use them throughout the day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, Greg and Vamps is who heads up our our whole rosin department. They're just they're they're a couple. They're incredible. They've been with us forever. You know, it's like we just kind of let everyone do their thing. You know, if you're good at what you do, we support you. You're part of our team. We take care of you and do your craft. You is that at I mean? Jungle Boy's Full Melts? Yeah, Jungle Boy Full Melts. Yeah. yeah. Or Jungle Boy Full Melts is, is Juice, and then Jungle Boy's Rosin is uh, is Vamps and Greg. Okay, yeah. there you go. Yeah. It's not you who you're talking to. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, it's cool for people because they love that, man. You know, they want to connect with you guys. Yeah, you know, and I, and I think it's it's kind of the way we've, we've done it. You know, we give everyone, like, their thing, and if you're good at what you do, that's your thing. You know what I mean? Like, we don't push you to do anything else but that thing, you know? Bro, what was it like being on Be Real Smoke Box? That looked oh pretty God, intense. <laughs> <laughs> so, I love that episode. You guys are, that was killer. So, Juice and Roach purposely, I literally, every time I would look over, they would just be in the back with the cannon. Because <laughs> Roach is a fool, you know? Like, he has to do some dumb shit, you know? So, he would just sit in there, like, trying to make it as smoke, and they're like, Juice is like the heaviest smoker all day, every day he's smoking, you know? So I literally, at one point I turned back and I was like, stop. 
I'm like, I gotta get through this. Do you yeah. know how fucking hard it is oh. to fucking talk inside of a fire, bro? Mm-hmm. Like lock yourself in a room and catch it on fire and then try to have a conversation with somebody. Do you know? <laughs> he would bring that podcast up and I would be like, man, I don't think I would make it. No, dying, Straight bro. up. Like, I used to I tell him, I was like, we're gonna be on there. I, and then he'd be like, I don't think I can make it, bro. I, I, I'll be falling out. <laughs> like, I don't do the smoke, the smoke box or the, the hot it box very well. Like that shit ended for me like early 20s. Um, yeah, before I went on that burner, like pulled me to the side and was like, bro, this is going to be heavy, bro. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, I felt like I was going to die inside there. You know? <laughs> wow. He was like, I was sweating, you know? And I'm like, I got this, bro. But the problem is, is you smoke heavy before you go on there. And then you go on there and you smoke even more heavy, you know? <laughs> so what, in, what ends up happening is you get so fucking high. And then right when you get out, I remember the first thing I told burner was, I thought I was going to die. <laughs> <laughs> just joking you know but yeah. i was like he's like i fucking told you i'm like bro that shit was cr- i mean just drenched in sweat you're just oh wow covered in, there's no oxygen bro oh <laughs> you're just sitting in a car in a studio yeah, hot boxing yeah there's no oh, ac yeah. there's no so he nothing. just has a car parked up yes. in there and just in a, cameras in a little in warehouse it. like this there's no air in or out and you're just fucking hot box, bro. <laughs> you know, so it's like, if you're just sitting there smoking with your homies, it's cool, but trying to do an interview and talk and come up with content, and it's difficult, bro. You win an award after. Yeah, That's it's why like you getting see, through Hell you Week. You see Wiz, he takes off his clothes inside of the car. If you watch Wiz's episode, he starts fucking taking off all of his clothes because you're dying inside <laughs> there, bro. <laughs> watch that episode, uh, right? Yeah. Go back and watch that episode uh-huh. and tell me Wiz don't start taking off all of his clothes, bro. Because he's dying inside there. Wow. You know? <laughs> oh, my God, bro. That's probably yeah. why he, he he's, I, I think he switched it up. He evolved a Dr. Green Thumb podcast he's got yeah. going. Does he still do the smoke box? B- B-Rail's the man, bro. Listen. Yeah. I, I, what B- a legend. Yeah, he's yeah. a straight up legend, bro. Always been the big homie to us, bro. Always always treated us with open arms. Always been fucking amazing towards us. Always showed mad respect and we've always showed mad respect to him. And dude, I'm a fan of his, bro. He's fucking B-Rail, bro. I know. You know, he's a legend, bro. Fire. Cypress Hill is fucking the hardest shit ever, bro. Yeah, you know? OG from OG. Yeah. yeah. So same thing with him. You know, anytime, you know, Anytime he needed anything from us or whatever, bro, he's he's the big homie, bro, for sure. Quick three, top three strains all time for you. Oh, man. You know, uh, I just got to, because I know you've seen thousands, thousands and thousands and thousands of strains. Yeah. So last year we grew 368 different strains. So there you go. Right. That's just last year alone. Right. So, and we've been doing this for a long time. So, you know, we'll, we'll grow three, four, 500 strains every year you know different so ones all different so there yeah. you go so we dropped 368 different flavors at our store this year alone in 2021 holy cow yeah that's incredible yeah. bro so it's like when people say i mean bro all, all it changes bro give me one that you wish you could get back from from any other time that you know it's probably dead or i mean our our original og shit you know that we had you know when we were at 23rd all that stuff that got sick and had disease issues and problems and but they in their heyday and their glory day bro that shit was the most dankest virus og ever you know we were talking about people that used to grow the hardcore and then you just see like things kind of fade away because of diseases or the new hype thing but most guys always hold you know i i've always held on to a lot of stuff though you know like we have a deep deep genetic bank you know i've heard i've heard rumors in the yeah. industry yeah you know so it's like I, i'm a hoarder you know when it comes to strange you know i try to keep everything around and you know we have a tissue culture lab where we can we can store stuff for you know not forever but you know you can store it out for longer periods of time you know because you know keeping 500 different strains is is difficult you shout know? out mike hydro yeah mike Hy- mike hydro is one of our guys that you know definitely you know our nursery team is incredible bro you know like our nursery team is like you know they get it bro they understand like this is our this is our life this is our archive right here you know and without this you know there is no jungle boys you know yeah because this is years of pheno hunting and seeds and you know this homie gave me this and oh i got this cut and someone gave it to me with broad mites and (laughs) i lost millions of dollars and my whole entire grow got wiped out over this one stupid ass cut because i was chasing something you know so those days are over you know like we don't take cuts from other people and we kind of just hunker everything down you know Know, because it's like now with all these different diseases going around you know it's like the new variant of covid what's the new variant of the cannabis disease plant disease that people are gonna have to deal with that's wiping out crops you know 
it just pushes you to have your own strains, have your own brand pop seeds. And that's why I love that you guys started offering that at the, uh, at TLC is that you have like breeders packs, you got all these different packs of seeds drop and it's epic. Yeah. Uh, someone had made the comment when we dropped our first seeds, like, Oh, they must've had a room Hermie. And I'm like, I'm like, it's funny. Cause I'm like, I wish we could do shit half ass like that. We went, and, <laughs> we went and built a breeding facility. We went and flowered all the males out everything that we selected was from you know the last 10 years and then we picked the males and then we kept we we bred it to all of our keepers and then from there it went to the tissue culture lab where everything was cleaned up and then we ran all the seeds three times and then by the time you run the three seeds three times then we release our seeds you know so i'm like i don't think anyone is going through that detail and and putting that much money into the breeding project but we don't know how to do shit half ass you know so it's like once you get those seeds you know i promise you that those are the cleanest those are all, all of our fire keepers that that we back cross to or we used a mail or we flipped them whatever we did to get there and it's like those seeds are 100 if someone says oh i had a pack or something real i i promise you that we tested them in multiple rooms pop thousands of seeds and we haven't had any issues well and people need to understand that this is a plant and sometimes it does do weird things and sometimes when you're crossing a 20 year old genetic or 25 year old genetic with something you can only get in one place in the world yeah you might have a couple herms and from some of the best podcasters and some of the best growers we've heard yeah out of six herms we found one gem that turned out to be the absolute diamond yeah you know know, so it's like we we the the whole breeding thing it's like we've been breeding with hundreds of lights you know what i mean like we have pictures of 80 light rooms flipped with just males inside of them you know what i mean to take wow. an 80 light flower room and flip that and just have nothing but males inside of it it's like bro that, that, that's a lot of money and time dedicated to this you know like you're you're all that pollen then you got to separate it by which strain and which are the keepers what's not a keeper and even just to keep, hold all those males i think we have like you know a couple hundred males even just to keep those in a lab where you paying employees to take care of them because what, what else are you gonna do with all these males you know it's a, it's a lot of time and money to do all that stuff for sure yeah and then that fire that you guys ended up having with the light bulb that burst you honestly set a standard in the industry for change now you see leds taking over and i'd like to say in a bad way but in a good way for the industry you guys were set another bar and that was wow this can happen and look what you can the l can be yeah i mean i I think that we knew that we couldn't survive not in la and not in california growing under des paying the electricity rates we're paying you know all the stuff we're paying and then same thing it's like do you have a bowl blow up and catch on fire you know and you you burn down a room that they open up all the doors and all the smoke spreads to the whole facility it's like how do you recover from that shit, bro you know like people are like oh insurance yeah fucking right no insurance help from the city that. no help from the state we still want our taxes we still you know you, know, you got to pay rent you, yep. know, you still got to pay your electric bill you still got to pay all your employees you know and at the end of the day you you just like bro we got to progress we got to make this industry you know we got to always be forward thinking you know yeah. so it's like let's start really digging into this whole led thing you know and i think what blessed us was covid the good thing that came out of COVID is we're all in lockdown, right? We couldn't travel. We couldn't go anywhere. So we're like, Hey, let's really start getting into these LEDs, right? Let's really figure this shit out. Right. Cause you know, like, let's be real, right? None of this shit is backed by science, right? None of us have money that we can pay a bunch of people and say, Hey, can you study this on <laughs> cannabis? Because even the people that are doing studies on it now, they're doing it on hemp, yeah. you know, and they're not doing it on, and they're not doing it on the strains we're growing. You know, so it's like everyone just looks at what everyone else is doing. They're like, okay, if that guy is using that spectrum, I'm just going to change one or two diodes. Now mine's going to be a little bit different, but at the end of the day, it's all the same shit. You know, just people are sticking brands on it and, and names on it, you know? So we're like, let's think outside the box, you know, let's really come up with some shit and let's figure out the spectrum stuff, you know? And I think the coolest part about it is, is we were looking for a flower spectrum because that's where you always go to first. And we actually reversed it is we found a flower spectrum but we found an even better veg spectrum Ooh, right which okay. is really cool right so we we knew that a thousand watt metal halide bu- bulb and a thousand watt cmh or 630 watt cmh or 315 whatever combo you use for your grow we knew that the plants like that blue right the plants pray the plants grew good right but what if the plants like the blue but they love something else right so we took 28 different spectrums 
thousands of different varieties, right? So we would do a hundred of this strain, a hundred of this strain, a hundred of that strain under 28 different spectrums. And then we'd see different growth rates, different root growth, all that stuff. And at the very end, we ended up with three spectrums. And then those three spectrums, we did them on a bigger scale. And then from there, we ended up with two. And what we basically found was red spectrum for veg keeps the plants short and the roots just blow out like crazy. So if you think about all the guys that are doing vertically growing that are growing double stack and triple stack, right? They don't want tall plants. They want short plants. So we're like, what if we offered a fixture that you could just grow short plants, right? Incredible growth. Plants look healthy. Roots are completely blown out. Way faster growth than this thousand watt uh, MA slide, but it's only 400 watts, Dang. right? So now you're basically 33% electricity, right? Instead wow. of a thousand watt bulb, you're using 400 watts. And, and the perfect spectrum for that outfit. Perfect spectrum for that, that medium to short yep. plant that you want to double stack and triple stack. And then we found another spectrum. So that, that's our 90R spectrum, basically. So that's what we called it was a 90R, right? So then we found another spectrum that works good for traditional growers, like the way we grow, right? A medium-sized plant, two and a half to four week veg, right? Mm -hmm. So we line all these thousand watt plants up, same strain up to 400 watt. And we would just see this incredible growth under 400 watt. And I'm like, bro, how is a 400 watt light outperforming a thousand watt light? Because we found the right fucking spectrum for cannabis. No one has done this shit. <laughs> Listen, if people have done this, they claim they did it. They've never shared it with me before. And I've never been able to buy the light fixture. Right. So if someone says, oh, we did all that shit before, I'm not disagreeing with you. Just where can I go buy that light right now with that spectrum? Right? Yeah. We're talking about accessible to the grower that you can go get. And then in your decade plus a grow in 20 years, this is what I've come across. Everything that I've come across. This yeah, is the one. Yeah. I hear people say, oh, Blurple, Blurple has been around. I'm like, yeah, but this the, the technology now is like a, is like a, a pager compared to an iPhone 13, you know, the LED technology yeah. is way ahead of its time, you know, and a thousand watt LED is a fucking joke, bro. If you're going to replace a, a thousand watt light with a thousand watt HPS, it's the same shit. It's a thousand Watts. Yes. Right. We should be going forward thinking where it's like, we should be using half or a quarter of the electricity or why even what, what are you accomplishing at the end of the day? If you're, if you're putting up an LED, that's a watt is a watt, bro. In your honing spectrum now too. Yes. So now you're sharpening that tool. Yeah. yeah. So the tool is a spectrum, right? So now, now I start looking at other light companies spectrums and I realize, bro, they got it. We all got it wrong, bro. We've had it wrong this whole entire time because we've had to overcompensate with light because it was the wrong spectrum. Oh, wow. You know, and this light bulb clicks in our head, right? We're like, bro, we fucking figured this shit out, bro. So we start just growing plants after plants, plant, and every strain we grow under, it looks incredible. Roots completely blown out, the healthiest plant you've ever seen, and it's right next to a thousand watt light, and that other plant just looks like okay. Like it grows okay, but it's not doesn't it's not triple the size with roots blown out on it. It's getting too much of spectrums it doesn't need, so yes. it's it's combating everything. So basically, yeah. what you're doing essentially with a thousand watt, say MH light, is that the light is correct, right, for that plant, right? But it's not everything that the plant wants, right? So you're basically giving it more of it. So you have to give it a thousand watts because a thousand watts of that spectrum is what the plant needs to grow, right? But if you have the proper spectrum, you could actually give it four hundred watts. You know, and that's a game changer, bro, for people that have multi huge facilities and you're going thousands of lights and you can take, you know, say a, you know, 40,000 light room, you know, or 40,000 watt room. And then you, you turn that into each fixture now is only 400 watts, bro. You can basically double up. Yeah. Your, your lights. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's even more than double. Yeah, exactly. That's the crazy part because a lot of the thousand watt fixtures are actually 1200 watts. A lot of people don't know that, but a thousand watt fixture is actually 1200 watts because all the manufacturers turn that shit up. Well, and you guys have a you know? beautiful frame too. It's sleek. It's light. You, a one person can put it up for the home grower. Yeah. You have a light that the home grower can <laughs> actually put up by themselves. It's yeah. not going to, you're not sitting there like, yeah. you know, like, yeah, it's well, two, all of 200 us watt that. bars, bro. You know, it's like 200, 200, 200 watt bars is a game changer. But you thought yeah. about the way it folds out. Like it, it's very, it's the right growers, everything. Bro. So you yeah. be, listen, you want to be able to go to the hydro store and put that shit in the back of your car. You don't want to take a truck to bring home a light, you know? So it's folded. Yep. Yep. So it's like this whole bar technology for us was like, hey, let's use this time in COVID. And let's really figure this out. 
you know so i think i think we came out with a with a really cool you know with a really cool product that is definitely going to change i don't care what anybody says like you're going to tell me if you have a choice to put 400 watts or a thousand watt and the 400 watt outs performs a thousand watt stop bro you're picking the 400 watt yeah you know and the cool part about led is now everyone can get introduced to led and veg you know so it's like get get your veg all set up and then once you learn about leds then you could switch over to flower you know because yeah. a lot of people don't understand yeah. and when you're flowering with leds you know the humidity is completely different the environment is completely different you know you're in the big leagues now you know so it's like it's it's a cool learning curve where the regular guy can now just start with an led light and veg and know that it's the best spectrum for that plant you know it's a lot different right how long did from going from houses to warehouses how long did it take you to get the hang of doing warehouses i i think that's one of the hardest moves for a grower yeah i mean i think that i i couldn't fail because i didn't have a backup plan you know <laughs> so i always just I spent all my time inside the grow, you know, like I, I would always know when we had a run, like from the time the lights went on till midday, I was always inside the room checking shit, you know, like, you know, you walk in a room and there's an air conditioner out or there's a dehumidifier. Like I get my guys all the time, bro. Like that's the one thing they'll never have on me. I'll walk into a room and be like, there's an AC out. How the fuck do you know there's an AC out? You know, oh, there's a dehumidifier off in this room. Like, how do you know there's a dehumidifier off this room? Like, when you spend enough time with these plants, like, you just feel the environment. You know it. You know, you lit. You you spend more time with the plants than you do at home. You spend more time with the plants than you do with your family. You know, so it's like you know your kid, right? You got your bad kid, your good kid, the kid that listens, the kid that doesn't listen. The same thing with rooms, right? You go in this room, you're like, bro, you know when something's wrong in this room. You know, <laughs> even if the dehumidifier is working, but it's not really working, you're like, something's up. There's something up. Yeah. They're like, what do you need? No, it's all. And then, oh, oh, yeah. it's only when you're here, bro. Yeah. It's only when you're here. Yeah. <laughs> Man, uh, your journey's epic, bro. It really is. Uh, congratulations on Lux Lighting. Thanks, man. From all of us, man. Thanks, I mean, uh, it, it's nothing but straight clapping for that because you you laid the ground print for coming from a light in a closet to all the way up to building your own light and now selling it for an unbelievable amount and 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 you make one of the best lights in the whole industry i mean it has to be said yeah i think we've always put our name behind anything that we do you know what i mean anything that we put the jungle boy name on or anything that i'm gonna go say i'm hey i'm gonna promote this product we believe in this product and we use this product you know what i mean there's not like when we were using veg bloom and we were using floriflex we were genuinely using these products you know what i mean we just weren't getting paid you know like everyone thought we had like we were getting paid by all these people you know like or you know how many companies we put on the map that got really fucking rich off of us? You know, we never asked for anything from these people, you know? You still do. You still put on. People look at the oh. ACs you're using. And and, the and and listen, any of those companies, I'll tell the people, this is the stuff we're using. You know what I mean? And at the end of the day, it was like, we just got to the point where we're like, dude, we got to build our own shit. You know what I mean? We, How can we stand behind a product that didn't come from us, you know? So it's like when, when my partner, Brandon approached me, I was like, Hey bro, like, let's, let's do this. I was like, I'm not sure. He's like, no, bro, you're going to be able to design this from scratch. You know, the same thing with Athena. It'll be your guys shit, whatever nutrients you guys run, whatever combo you've been making, it'll be the exact same shit. You know? And I think that's when we're like, all right, we're down to do this. You know, we're down to go on the journey and like anything else you you, you, you have your ups, your downs, you learn all this shit. But I, I think the problem with this industry sometimes is like, for some reason there's like the stigma where people aren't supposed to win bro you know yeah. it's like it's like we're always supposed to just do so good you know like no one can be like bro he fucking made it bro yeah you know like yeah, no one wants to be happy for you yeah it's like listen all my phone yesterday was all all my homies fucking congrats sick of shit ever bro fucking you're the fucking man you guys did this shit like uh, thank you know i wouldn't fucking we're all here together we're in this shit together bro you know and then you know it's like anyone who's not going to be happy for someone for fucking doing good in life and coming from nothing bro I, then what the fuck are we all here for bro yeah what's your goal yeah yeah <laughs> are you hoping someone's gonna be happy for you yeah because it's like dude you and know, jungle boys are still right on people. track yeah we still own jungle boys 100 uh, i mean <laughs> yeah, that yeah. Was a, well i wanted to ask is like what what do you feel your experience has been like on 
the ancillary th- side of things and then versus working with the plant. Yeah. I mean, listen, I think that we had to do it to survive, bro. In in this industry, people don't realize. Way. Yeah. People don't realize it's like. To like, keep control. N- not only keep control, it's like, how, how can we keep promoting all these companies and making all these other companies rich when my own people aren't eating, bro? Yeah. You Ooh. know, like we can't pay our bills and we're struggling but we're supposed to make Joe Blow's company real that we don't even own a piece of. And you know what I mean? Like uh, I'll shout can't out change anybody's thing. Yeah. I can't, ch- I don't have control over it. There's a know? lot more than that. Yeah. yeah. It's- and, and listen, at the end of the day, it's like, if someone's putting out a, a product, like we, we don't know what the quality control is behind the scenes. We don't know anything. We're just telling people we use this product. There's no input. Yeah. That's output. how it's always been. Right. So we were always like, Hey, you know, when we first started on the boards, like we were using Aptis. We're like, hey, check this out. This is Aptis. This is this product we use, right? Here's our results, right? We didn't know that. We had never met the owners of Aptis. We didn't know who they were, you know? Then it was like, oh, you know, we're using Veg Bloom. Of course, once they see you're, they're running your product, they hit you up. Hey, bro, you want some free salt? You want some free nutrients? Let us know. You know what I mean? But they weren't paying us to promote any of this shit, bro. We this never, was what worked for you in your garden. Yeah, we never got a check, you know? And did we ever approach those people and like, hey, bro, we could do bigger things together? Of course, they never want to give us a piece of any of that shit, you know, but they didn't, th- these people didn't realize like, we're going to make it even bigger, bro. Yeah. They you don't know? see the big picture. They didn't yeah. see the big picture. Mm-hmm. You know, they wanted to keep it all to themselves. So we're like, cool, we want to start our own shit for our own people and be able to tell people what we use, what makes, what makes us successful, you know, but everything yep. we're going to do is going to be genuine. It's going to be real. And it's going to be made by us and we're going to back it 1 million fucking percent. That's why we kind of did the whole facility advisor thing, bro. And there's no other nutrient company that's having people go inside your facility and advise you and hold your hand and help you, whether you're a professional grower or not, right? We're offering you the service for free. Wow. You know, we'll go help you set up your facility, right? We'll teach you how to run the nutrients, right? And when we say teach you how to run the nutrients, we're just going to show you what we do. You know, if you have a better way, go ahead. If it's you free feel, consulting. It's free. We we offer it to every anybody who buys oh, uh, so, nutrients. To some people, <laughs> by the top cultivation. To some people, that's a couple. You know, that's either a percentage or hundreds of thousands no, of dollars. No, I can yes. easily go charge people a hundred thousand dollar consulting fee all day long and show them how to run a facility 100%. all day long. And, you know, but I'm, I'm we're giving them the game for free and we're asking in return. Like, hey, use the products that we use. I think that's a fair deal, bro. You're giving away a, a ton of game. Yeah, you even posting pictures. And it's the and same given. shit that we use every day. There's no <laughs> secrets. There's no other shit that we use. It's this. Yep. I'll go grab the same bag you're grabbing all day long. It's exactly what we use. Yep. You know, your so, IPM is blowing up. The the Fina IPM, the one we have out here, <laughs> phenomenal product. I see it all over all legal gardens, rec market, everywhere already. Yeah. So that's all we kind of did, right? Was bring all the stuff that we use behind the scenes and been like, here you go. This is what we use, you know. And the thing that's co- the coolest about it is it's pennies on the dollar. You know what I mean? Like we're not we're not fucking the, the margins are slim on that, you know. But we're making a fair living and we're employing our employees, and you know we have a brand that's made in the United States, made in Southern California. You know, it's it's bottled in Northern California. You don't get more American than that, bro. Yeah. This is America, bro. <laughs> Shout out to NorCal. You know, like we got uh, love yeah. for you down here in LA, right? Of course. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean, that's where that's where Just Athena's bottled is in Northern California. You know, uh, how was it putting together something like that? Like you partnered up with some people that? No, so so my partner Brandon owned a hydro store. You okay. Know? And he basically, uh, he was originally partners with Rex from Power SI, the two guys who started Power SI together, you know, and, and he basically came to me and, you know, they were, they were selling us hydro equipment he was selling us hydro companies. Like, listen, bro, like yours and Roach's knowledge, why don't you guys build everything from scratch, bro? And let's sell your own product, you know, like whatever light you want to build, if you want it to be this square, this length, all this stuff, let's, we literally sat in the conference room and we built the light. You know, we're like, this is how we want the reflector to look. If we grew the perfect light over the table, this is how you should put out more light, you know? So we kind of designed everything. Here. Same, same thing with Athena. We worked on a bunch of different forms because I used to make my own salts. Yep. You know, I would wow. always mix my own salts, but it would get hard on scale because I'm running a business. I'm running Instagram. I got a family and it's like, guys are calling me like, we need salts. Like, fuck, I got to go over there and mix everyone's salts for them. You know, so I'd mix all, mix all the batches together. And then it was like, hey, why don't you guys... Just let, uh, let, let's show us how you do it and we'll just get a warehouse and we'll do it on scale. We'll hire scientists and we'll hire f- people from UC David to double check it and we'll do all the lab work. Wow. Everything will be QC controlled. And I'm like, if we can do that, I'm 100% down to do it. 
if I know that the bag I'm buying has two lab reports and it's exactly what it says it's going to be, then I'm, I'm down to start this company. Passes testing, does Everything. all the that's right big, stuff. That's yeah. a big statement. That's, yep. that's And you'll use it in your garden. 100%. You can go to my garden anytime. That's what we're using. Epic. You know? So all that worked out and, uh, and you began the birth of the companies. Yeah. So yeah, we, we, it, Lux kind of started first, you know, Lux is a four year old company, you know, Athena is a three year old company, you know, wow. and we, we, we made, you know, Lux did a hundred million last year in sales, you know? Oh, so it's like, wow. we started that company with a couple hundred grand, you know, but what we, what we did have is we had the knowledge, right. And we had the drive and we had the passion. We had the people to say, Hey, listen, we're going to build something that we use that we're going to tear down all of our rooms. We're going to hang them in. We're going to use them. We believe in this product. We stand by this product. You know, we're putting our name and our word on this. We're not going to give someone some bullshit that doesn't work. You know, and we just wanted people to have successful. And I feel like a lot of people had a lot of amazing success with the lights, you know, same with the nutrients. People crush it every single day. Yeah. You know, some of the biggest growers there are use Athena. Yep. You know, so it's cool. You know, it's cool. It's like we didn't plan on being in the picks and shovel business. You know, we just thought we were always going to be in the, in the cannabis right. business, you know, but I think out of necessity, California kind of pushed us and kind of made our hand like, hey, you got to get other incomes and you got to figure out other stuff. And why should these other guys get rich off of this industry? Why can't we make money? Off? We, we started this shit. You're the <laughs> ones that know what will work best. And yeah. it's, you're the ones doing it. It ends up staying in the industry, too. Yeah. And why wouldn't the industry want the money to stay in the industry? Yeah, exactly. You know, that goes back to like. You bring it right back anyways, <laughs> yeah. obviously. It's your yeah. passion. What yeah. do you, what is, what's the future look like for Myva from the Jungle Boys? Oh man. Um, so definitely count, concentrating on Florida, you know, going to be out in Florida a lot. Which by the way, we got to go on a fishing trip out there. Let's oh, go. Oh man. Big dog. Yeah. I gotta We're take Florida you, natives. We I got to take that. you guys California fishing, bro. Oh, okay. Let's do that to. first yeah, then. Yeah. You guys going to have to hit the gym then. a couple times though, bro. Oh, bro that shit's really not going to be no joke, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Is there like a, like a mild, medium, hard, like an easy beginner? No, no, no. We're hardcore, bro. Hard There's no fucking. Down. It's fucking hardcore, bro. Dude. 60, 70 miles out. There's no like an yeah. easy yeah. jump. 60, 70 nothing. miles is that you were close to home. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't we're know. One day trips. Maybe, sometimes we're 130 miles out, you know? <laughs> Leave my house at 5 a.m., 4 a.m., you know, but we're always back the same day, bro. Can the we boat, take the pill? Uh, yeah, that, that's what you need. Take the it. Drama I mean, means drama shit, means. Yeah, man. You know. I don't know. But, but you, you're 130 gonna, miles. You're going to catch a 300-pound bluefin rod no. and reel, stand up and catch that shit, bro. It's incredible. Best fit, eating fish you'll ever eat in your life, bro. To, wow. to get our videographer on there throwing up. I'm willing to do it. <laughs> I, I've taken a few guys from the cannabis industry fishing, and most of them all end up throwing up and begging to get go back home. That yeah. probably be me. I, he goes, <laughs> "We got to we got to talk to Ivan about and fish." And I said, "Have you, you ever been you out fishing? Do any fishing out in Florida? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, listen, listen, there, there's, there's local it's fishing you know, that we can do. Let's go where catch some trout, bro. Yeah, yeah, listen, there's local fishing we can do <laughs> where, it's, where it's a lot more calm. And it's fun, but I'm talking like to catch some big bluefin. It's so much fun, bro. Yeah. <laughs> You've done some fishing in Florida now. Have you gone flats fishing? I've done a little bit of everything there. Yeah. That's yeah. What, what do that's, you think about that? Yeah. Florida is incredible. Yeah. Like the inshore fishing in Florida, nothing can beat the inshore fishing in Florida it's unless sport. you go like a different country or something, you know? Yeah. There but you go. California compared to Florida inshore fishing, big fish fishing. There's, there's no, there's, that's not even a competition. Florida wins that part. But offshore fishing, California blows away Florida. Wow, that's epic long. to hear. Yeah. That's cool to hear. Yeah. Hell yeah. Damn, any any last closing statements? Any shout outs? Anything, man? <sighs> man, shout out to everybody in this industry, bro, that's been through it. You know, like everyone, bro, that's, you know, there's there's so many freaking brands out there that, you know, that maybe they didn't survive. Maybe they're still around or whatever. It's just like, if you're still hanging on, and you're still doing your thing, respect, bro. Respect to everyone, you know, like this, sh this shit's been a, been an interesting journey and especially the brands that were founded in california and still are in california you know those are the brands you got to give props to because a lot of these guys are just barely hanging on you know it's it's brutal for sure any advice to any young growers guys that they look at you and they're like he's at the top man i just you know i got one light in the closet or i got a half a half a garage Maybe, going yeah you know i mean make sure that this is your passion and this is what you want to do right because yeah. it's not all you know it's not all popping bottles and, you know, having fire harvest and $5,000 <laughs> a pound. Like those days are gone, you know? So it's like, just find your niche. I tell everyone, find your niche, find what you're good at and, and just 
do it a hundred. You know what I mean? Don't, don't, you know, start a cannabis brand the next week, start a clothing brand. You know, it's like build your brand first, build your name first, and then print some shirts out, you know, <laughs> print a hat out. You know, it's like, you got to get, you got to take each step at a time. And if, and if you're doing that in this industry and you're, you know, able to sell clothing and, you know, you're able to still grow top shelf cannabis. I mean, respect to those brands, bro. Like 100% respect to those brands. Cause I know what they've been through because I've been through the same shit and it's tough for sure. Yeah. Man. OG of all OGs, huge shout out, big Lux lighting shout out, Athena shout out. Uh, I just want to say something before we end it too, is that I reached out to you and I was like, man, we'd love to have you on the podcast. And you were like, we'd like to sponsor. And it wasn't, you guys reached right out to us. And that's just from us, bro. Huge shout out to you, bro. Big ups for seeing something that's working and being like, yo, we want to be there as this thing progresses and blows the fuck up. So. Yeah. I appreciate that, bro. I think, you know, uh, just just to end it on this note right i think we, we always want to help everyone out bro like mm -hmm. whether if you're a flower vendor or you're a grower or you're just getting into this industry bro like we'll always have a place on the shelf for all those guys you know and if anyone's do you know like doing a podcast or trying to do some cool shit of course we want to support it it's our industry it's what it's what you know what, what i always tell people i'm like bro what like this is all i know this is this is my life right i just want to keep giving back so people can do dope shit you know, because if you do dope podcasts, what it's going to do, bring more recognition to the industry. We all do cool shit. You're going to go on and be some big podcast guy. Call me in five years, bro. Let me get back on the podcast. You know, like Let's that's go. all that's it's just dope. Just do dope shit with dope people and you live a happy life, bro. You know, for sure. You know, I like that a lot, man. man it couldn't have been said any better for real. Wrapping it up, man. Jungle Boys, it's Ivan right here. You already know it's first smoke of the day, man. We appreciate everybody. Peace. Yo, what's up, First Smoke family? Just want to take a few seconds to shout out some special partners of the show. Make sure you guys go check out Grow Generation, the largest hydroponic retailer in the nation, over 60 retail stores, growgeneration.com. They also carry some awesome products there. Blackleaf, tell them a little bit about our next sponsor, Power SI. This is what I use in my garden. This is what the best growers in the country are using. This is what the best growers in the world are using. For more information on our partners, click in the description below. We're going to include all the links, all the information, everything you guys need to know to get down with any of these companies. Shout out to Grow Generation, Power SI. We appreciate you guys. First Smoke family forever. Hey, what up? It's Blackleaf. I'm here to talk about one of the sponsors for First Smoke of the Day podcast, AthenaProducts.com, Athena Nutrients. If you want to see some of the premier growers in the country who rock Athena products, check out Athena.ag on Instagram, and you can see everybody who rocks with Athena. First Smoke of the Day podcast, Athena Plant Nutrients. Yo, Jungle Boys have been playing with fire since 2006. Pioneer cultivators based out of Los Angeles. You can find their product at TLC Collective in LA. For more info, go to jungleboys.com and follow at Jungle Boys on all platforms. Welcome to the jungle. What up, First Smoke of the Day fam? It's Blackleaf. Here to talk about one of our sponsors for First Smoke of the Day podcast, and that's NeptuneSeedBank.com. They got one of the most wide range of seeds on the internet, everything from boutique craft farmers all the way to the big breeders we've all heard about. If you want to see black leaf seeds and some of the other best seeds on the internet, check out NeptuneSeedBank.com. Yeah.